Okay, it's 636. I'm going to call the meeting to order of the Mobility and Transportation Infrastructure Committee, MTIC. It is uh, June 21st, uh, 2022, first day of summer and the longest daylight of the year. So to further begin the meeting, we'll have roll call. Chair Fisher. Here. Commissioner Abelson. Here. Commissioner Hughes. And Commissioner Dunlap is, is absent. Thank you, Leona. Um, we'll now go to the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to ask uh, Commissioner Abelson to lead us in the pledge. All right, if you please stand. Place your hand over your heart and begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chair Abelson. Um, We'll now go to item one on our agenda, uh, public comment. Um, I don't see anyone in the audience to give a public comment in the council chambers. Uh, do we have any public comments uh, that have come to us from another source? Okay, thank you. Item number two on the agenda is our information report on the status of projects. Um, Public Works Director Ted Gerber is going to give us um, an overview of the status of the projects. Thank you, Chair Fisher, and good evening, Commissioners. Um, so you'll see that we've uh, we've continued our approach here of our, of listing. Um, status updates on all of our uh, capital improvement program and uh, o and transportation and mobility projects. Uh, we realized that we had missed a couple of projects that I brought up in a previous session. So we released an addendum um, today to capture those, those last couple of projects. Um, so you know, we could take any specific questions about specific projects, but in general, um, we have had some movement in terms of backfilling the resources that we need to uh, complete these projects that actually came up during our council meeting about the number of capital improvement projects that we can take on in a given year. Um, and the council had asked us, you know, specifically with regard to street resurfacing, is there any way to accelerate what we're doing? And the answer is that we've already taken into consideration and acceleration in the list that we have here. As you can see, there's a lot of work to do here. We have apportioned out the work to uh, all of the available staff members um, and even the staff members that we don't have available, which I'll talk about in one moment. And then also the um, on-call services that we anticipate to bring on in July when we uh, bring that item to council. Um, so with that said, we've been able to bring on um, some staff members and actually as of yesterday, we had our senior engineer start uh, yesterday and we had our um, operations manager start in that role yesterday, um, but we still have several positions to bring on. Um, we have our transportation position that was recently approved uh, by the budget last week. Um, we have our um, uh, the, the supervisor positions in that group, facilities and parks. We have a civil engineering assistant. Um, two management analysts, um, and then there's some other field uh, positions to bring on as well. Uh, so there is a lot of work to do, um, and we are slowly making progress on a lot of these projects, but it, I understand it is slow. It's resource limited, which is an issue we're trying to resolve as we're trying to um, complete some of this work. So I'll just preface it by saying that. Uh, with that said, is, are any questions on specific projects? Yes, we'll start with uh, Commissioner Hughes. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, Ted. Always great to see you. I'm gonna go through some of these just kind of quickly. The Arroyo Seco Golf Course, that's complete now, right? So the barriers and all that, so that could be considered done on this list? Yes, it is done with regard to how it affects mobility concern. Um, there was two sections. There was one section along uh, the very small, short section along the golf course parking lot, um, and then a longer section along the driving range that followed the park, the pathway. Right. Pathway is complete. Uh, driving range has been open. Golf course section, we're still trying to resolve a couple issues, but it doesn't affect uh, either facility being open or um, anybody you know being in the area of the facility. So the mo the Parkway is open and we can remove this project from our list. Thank you. The Fair Oaks traffic signal, if you're saying we have all that completed and we got past the recall you know, materials and all that, um, so is that going to maybe start in July where we could sync with the software to, to get the signals working maybe more beneficial? Or what timing are we thinking if that part's there? Or do we now have to work about the controllers and who's going to operate it still? So there's, there's multiple phases to this project. This phase was the hardware installation and establishing the traffic management center at City Hall and then allowing, since Public Works no, no longer is at City Hall, also making a, a connection to uh, Garfield where we actually are sitting. Right. Um, it's like a modified connection. It was a little bit of a change order to the project since we moved. We started, uh, the traffic management center software training today with staff. Um, and so we'll be continuing that over the coming weeks. And then we expect the installation to wrap up about in June. But then the next phase of that project, which is the um, north south corridor ITS project, will actually do a lot of the work that you're talking about. Um, and that's the road, the new Rogan fund project. Um, so in addition to uh, making some configuration changes, beneficial configuration changes to Fair Oaks, which we don't fully have designed yet. We'll also implement additional um, ITS devices and do that signal work and um, that programming. So there's a limited amount of stuff that happens in, under this scope. It's basically the setup to that next project. I guess do we have a timing on that? Because I think one of the benefits of getting that, at least there's some way we can, again, maybe expedite the movement there. And we can really promote getting people off Fremont and and really promoting, you know, through social media, through, you know, website, through lots of different things to try to convince the community and partnering to get people off Fremont and get them over to Fair Oaks because we're gonna we're working to expedite that that thoroughfare through the signal. Um, um I, the timing is is over the course of a couple of years. It, the Rogan projects are that eleven million dollar project, and the Fremont Huntington projects a sixteen million dollar project. So we have a three and a half million dollar. Sorry, we have a three and a half year timeline on the Fremont Huntington project. The scope of the um, Fair Oaks project is is being modified a bit to sort of negotiate the space between the Fair Oaks signal signalization, and then um, the on-ramp, off-ramp work, because I think I think the prior thinking was that there may not need to do an on-ramp, on-ramp, off-ramp with this Fair Oaks project because it would resolve a lot of those issues, but we don't, I, that's not our current thinking. So there's there's a little bit of scope negotiation doing the Fair Oaks project. So we don't have a timeline as far as implementation, but we didn't schedule um, construction funds for this year for the Rogan Fund project. Because I just think the one thing we need to be cognizant of, and I know we've, we've, we've kind of beaten this a little bit, is that when we submitted the original measure and the, the, the 710 project list, we're on five years now. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like it's another how many more years? <laughs> and, you know, there's a lot of progress being made at the state level. You know, obviously Metro Caltrans has you know are looking and there's movement on properties and a lot of things but you want to make sure that you know part of it is trying to get that traffic so that we show that we're addressing what were the concerns of how do you get traffic still moving through the corridor and the Fremont issue Fair Oaks issue is so key and then particularly as we start looking at Pasadena and the, the lack of the stub and all of that that it, it just it's so important and it just keeps it, you know I know it's a slow train but it's just some way we could it, it's moving. It is a slow train. Um, you know, we, we, we meet with Pasadena every month on this. We had a meeting this morning. Uh, so our timelines are in sync because they have, they also have some um, 
transitional projects they call. And you'll be hearing more about that. Actually, one of them is in the, um, one of the minor O&M um, components is in our agenda tonight. But uh, there it, it, it's a years long pathway to get to where we're talking about um, because the amount of public engagement necessary, the amount of design work that's needed, the regional planning effort, it, it can, I understand how frustrating it is um, for the residents and for the commission here. Um, the best we can do is uh, keep you informed of what that pace is and just every month continually work on every as all the different aspects of that, those projects, um, but they are gonna take time. I mean, there's no way around that patience. On your, your neighborhood traffic management program, you're saying go to the city council for adoption. Is that the July 20th meeting? No, we're, we're not doing that at the July 20th meeting. Um, at the July 20th meeting, um, we're hoping to have the council approve our list of um, consultants that'll be the staff augmentation component of getting some of these projects done. So we had released that RFP um, in May. We had a lot of interest. We had over 60 uh, firms respond. Um, we extended the timeline to June 2nd to allow um, you know, all those vendors to submit a, a full proposal. We've been, we're working right now on going through all those proposals for all the different disciplines. We listed 29 different disciplines that we wanted assistance on. And so, um, where our plan is that between now and the end of July, we're awarding those contracts, selecting those contracts and um, uh, getting them ready to go to council for an approval. So we actually can execute, start to execute work on you know, the day after. Then also on installation of city limit signs, do you have those locations? Are you just looking at the ones we currently have, which is the one on Monterey, the one up on Fremont, um, the one on Orange Grove, um, and do we have locations exactly? Are we going to add to what we currently have? I think we're going to add. We haven't sorted this out yet, but in conversations with the city's man city manager's office, one well, that's one of her priorities is to um, you know promote your your entrance into the city when you come into the city. So we have uh, we have planned an update to the signs that are existing, and then we have to see where um, any additional signs would be. Obviously, every entrance to the city can't have a sign, but where we have those major entrances that don't have a sign, that's the hope. Well, maybe we can also in involve the Arts Council. Yeah, that's we would. Part of the, um, I mean, you might want to come up with something kind of really cool that's unique for us as opposed to, you know, I mean, we have the legal signs, but. Yeah, and, and that was the engagement with the city manager's office because for both this um, and this and the commercial uh, mission slow streets program, there will be um, a decent amount of engagement with um, the I guess I'll just call them like the, the community development aspects of stuff, which is planning, economic business development, and the the sort of cultural arts component of that. Um, for both of those projects. So we'll be, we'll be working together um, on, on those types of element, on those types of things. And last two on the Fremont southbound left turn pocket, is that gonna have a left hand, designated left hand turn arrow? No, the idea is there, it's just a um, restriping project that changes the, uh, the striping configuration to open up a left turn um, pocket there currently is it's basically right now it just says no left turn on the road um so that drivers can access the that um plaza from fremont i know we talked about a south on the southbound to try to do a designated arrow because people get out there and they get stuck yeah i mean this this was an interim i know it doesn't seem like interim because it's taking us a while to get it done but this was supposed to be an interim solution to what we would we would address um any sort of major changes during the fremont huntington project um so this was just supposed to basically provide some this for uh, grocery access outlet, relief right that's what yeah. that's what we're talking about uh say again sorry this is for grocery out yeah right next that's to grocery outlet yeah 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 oh because i was so the, but i'm also talking about the fremont and huntington to be able to have a designated left-hand turn arrow which would help 
Yeah. Right, north of the intersection. North Going, of the intersection. Yeah, this is just south of it. Yeah. yeah. Different. Yeah, this is south of the intersection. Yeah, yeah. we looked at coming when you come when you were coming down and you hit the right, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken here. Then you got and you're stuck out there. Is we don't we could do a designated left hand turn arrow, which would help move that traffic to get stuck out there in the in the intersection. Right. Um, yeah. So we we won't be like we won't be won't make any of those signal adjustment work at this moment at this time. And then my last last question is when you say. Um, under the replacement of missing Orange Grove street lamps, did, is that position hired? That As of got yesterday, for the, uh, that will help with the street lights because I know we've got, we've had you know, lights out. <laughs> yeah, um, we hired that position yesterday. Ah, um, so we'll we'll introduce both staff members to you, uh, at the next meeting. Thank you. That's all. My okay. Thank, Thank you, you Thank Commissioner you, Hughes. Uh, we'll go to Commissioner Abelson. Thank you, Chair Fisher. Um, thank you for the report, Ted, as always. So Kim covered a couple of questions, so I'm not going to repeat them. Um, I'll just go down the list where I have some notes that I wanted to ask about. So the Fair Oaks signal project, uh, we already covered one of my questions. The other was, so the traffic management center that's at City Hall, is that a physical space? And if so, where exactly is it? It's uh, a physical space on a on a computer rack mounted on the wall in the okay. basement. Yes, yeah, it's so not it's, like a dedicated it's not a place you could really visit. Okay. Um, it's basically just uh, you know, intelligent transportation system equipment. Um, at Garfield, it takes the it takes the form of a space because we have several monitors mounted on the wall for different staff to pull up the traffic um, for for viewing and conversation. But we really just have we can also access it on our laptops. Are on our computers, um, so we can, you know, uh, basically access um, the web servers that are um, embedded into the controllers, so that we can uh, see what's going on with each individual unit, and then um, from a macroscopic view, we can see what's happening with all of those units combined. So, is there would there be once this is complete, would there be I know the answer to the first question is I already know, which is, is there, would there be some dedicated person to sit, to be monitoring the traffic? The answer to that is no, yeah. okay? The next is, does this, would this give us the ability to adjust signal timing and such as necessary to improve traffic flow on the Fair Oaks corridor or no? Um, so it's a, it's a nuanced question. So the answer is uh, yes and no. Um, so this project was underway, uh, you know, for some time, um, and I think we were on our old commission when this yeah. was first conceived. Um, I, I don't know if the original intention was to have someone, you know, sort of dedicated to what, to looking at this as of last week, we really only had one FT for transportation in the city. And that was split among several people, my time included. Now that we've added um, a senior engineer that expands, but of course that person has to get on board. And then we're looking to add a couple of their administrative positions and then the transportation position we talked about. So there really is just zero capacity for someone to just monitor it all the time. Right. What we're really, really hoping um, that the system will provide us is a lot of um, data to make decisions based on. Um, and then also the ability to make um, changes easily. But uh, you know, I'm not sure um how it's operated in the past but most cities um you know timing sheets are only changed after a traffic engineer has evaluated them so we can use the system and use our uh our signal maintenance contractor to do evaluations of the data um troubleshoot and then make recommendations uh, for timing changes um but they they always uh, for many reasons, including you know the liability of you know the weight of uh, of, 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 of of traffic timing has on you know accidents and things like that, they really need to be approved by a traffic engineer. So, but it's within the city's authority and power. In other words, it's not a situation where some intersections were told, oh well, Caltrans controls the same intersection. Some other city or jurisdiction controls that intersection. These intersections ultimately we manage and control. So, that, assuming we have the data. Mm -hmm. Um, and a justification, an engineering justification. We alone have the ability 
to make the adjustments. That's correct. If it's determined there. Yeah. There are some signals that are exceptions, of course, the ones that are operated by Caltrans. Um, but in Would that this, include the interchange or is that ours? Or do you know? Are you talking about? I'm um, sorry, the uh, freeway interchange, parkway interchange, Fair Oaks and. Uh, yeah, those, those we have to, we would have to coordinate with Caltrans okay. on that. Okay. Um, but the Southern Fair Oaks area, yeah, th that's our, our you know, most everywhere else in the city, we, okay. we have our, that's our authority. Yeah. That's great. I didn't mean to do too deep a dive. No, no problem. It's just a quick question to add on to that. If, for example, if we know who this happens to us, um, we know there's something big at the Rose Bowl. So people, all the people are coming off and going and a lot of them might be coming up to Fremont because they came and they got off at Valley and they, as we have right now. And they're kind of, is there a way like to say, we need to get this traffic moving. So most of it's going to be going north-south. We might not have as much east-west like on Mission. I mean, would we say, look, we're going to keep longer green to get the traffic because we know there's a timing issue. It's not like it's, it's, they're going to an event at a time, but if we can get them out and then get our own traffic back to somewhat normal. That is a huge advantage of the system. Is that system. Something that, yes. Is that like a feasible? More than feasible. That's actually one of the major benefits that our city will take advantage of in this system is that, you know, we can program down to the minute or the day. Like if we want to, if we want a different traffic pattern on the weekend or on a specific day of the year event where we want the, we want to change um, how the phases operate, we can pre program that and have it automatically change uh, on that day uh, to allow that, uh, knowing that type of, um, what, what's happening there. So the, the data that informs that's very important, collecting that and then making the adjustment to, you know, for example, for the Rose, uh, for the Rose Bowl, that's a perfect example of, a, of an adjustment. We've made. Back to Commissioner Abelson. Thank you, John. Um, the Mission and Fremont RRFBs. So um, the question is, when do you think, you, you talked about summer 22 when the project can be bid for construction. When, because this is these are this is one of the another one of the projects that's been sitting around for quite some time. When do you think we'd actually see equipment out at these locations and construction beginning? Um, we approximately. Are, yeah, we're hoping that construction is beginning in fall. So where we are right now is that the um, plans have, are done. Um, it's the specifications which have a lot of performance components in them that have to be. Um, modified that we had the contractor, uh, the consultant who uh, did the design work also developed the bid documents. So there's been a little bit of back and forth on the design work over this time. Um, and so once that process is finalized, we bid that, like this said, we said this summer, uh, we are hoping to have uh, construction done so that those would be in operation before the holiday season. That was our hope. Um, not having the project down on the street yet and getting bid responses um, and, you know, the cost of materials and what um, the installer's availability is. I don't have a definite answer, but that's certainly our goal. So, you know, there's, a, there's some factors there, like I said, about materials and actually the, the availability of the installing contractor to do the work. But that's our expectation is to do it in the fall. Okay, that would be. That would be great because I, I just actually I was at a location over the weekend, Chapman College in the city of Orange at a referee camp. I'm digressing, and uh, they had them in a couple of different locations, uh, and they were fantastically successful in terms of alerting drivers to the fact that pedestrians are, are crossing the street. And I think they would just be a great benefit, um, especially especially on mission. So mm -hmm. anyway, looking forward to it. Same here. Yes. Um, Street improvements, uh, recommence design work. Um, any sense of timing for that? Uh, so they are at a um, a sixty percent right design. We've heard right that now. for quite some time. Yeah, um, we had to uh, extend the contract, um, and I don't have a. I don't have an answer as to how long it will take them to get to 90%, which is our next design review, but I could come back with that information. I don't, I don't have that tonight. Okay. Um, yeah. Cause it's been a while since we've seen any street construction, but you know that already. Yes. <laughs> um, measure M 
timeline. So I know it looks like it's it's moved moved right along in terms of getting the eight, the Joint Powers Authority uh, approval, and I guess now it's at Metro. Yeah. Right? Uh, so the Metro expectation is November. So um, most other cities were told to program their funds for 23, 24, which is next fiscal year. I asked specifically, since we have been waiting to use our funds for so long, is there any way we can get them sooner? So we can probably get some of the funds in the early 2023 after Metro does the approval at the end of this year. So that's, so we scheduled um, working on two of the projects in this fiscal year, which is the um, pedestrian crossing devices and the Gravalia um, Fair Oaks Northeast corner um, work. So that's, so the timing of those two will be early 2023 that we can start work using that money. And those were picked because of the dollar amounts associated with those projects or? They were picked because of the prioritization that council gave us after MTEC sent the item to council. Okay, because this is the 1.7 million, I believe. Yeah, this is the 1.7, exactly. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. I'm not enamored with the pedestrian crossing priority, but I, for the Gravilla Fair Oaks, I agree with. So um, there's a signal that's sorely needed at Garfield and Monterey. That's part of that list that it would be great to at least get the study done. You know? Yeah. I Maybe mean, that's something that, who knows? Some of these things um, we can utilize. We beefed up our, um, operations engineering professional services budget this year with the idea that we can't wait for grant funding to kick in for everything. Um, so there's a lot of things that are going to be dependent on those, that money. It's not a lot. Um, but our hope was that, so for some of the transportation work, that's very long-term grant funded, uh, we can, we can do some early work right away on that. So one perfect example is the, um, the interchange. So that's got like an eight to 10 year timeline and um, the measure our money, we can't necessarily spend on um, early work. So we plan on hiring a consultant during that July meeting to help us with like highway specific transportation work to start that ball rolling using our operating budget. So we may be able to do something similar for the other measure I'm work, but it's tough because we're pulling from a very small pot. And so we have to make, you know, oh, very, we have to sort of prioritize that money. Got it. And I was just thinking with the one seven, with the measure M money, that's all money that I think by now we should have received. Yeah. Right? So, so they, that's why they heard our argument about being able to program it earlier than they would normally allow. Right. Um, because we've been waiting for so Thank long. Thank you for pushing that argument. I appreciate it. Um, Columbia Avenue striping and signals. So you sent us, I mean, one of the additional documents was this uh, design. Is that what you were referring to when you said it's something you're gonna talk about later? If so, I'll- Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, um, you know, we are trying to chip off work that we can do early versus waiting for longer term work to be done. So the Columbia, um, the Columbia street striping work uh, that we have under measure M that includes improvements to the Orange Grove and Columbia intersection, which could look like um, changes to the signal, uh, phase changes to the signal. That's programmed into the Measure M budget that would come in following years. And Pasadena's portion is programmed into their Measure R money, which would come in following years. So we're trying to knock off that project like in the next couple of months. Uh, so that's why we included it tonight. Um, we're gonna do a notification to the neighborhood about that's our plan. The one that's in the in the in the agenda tonight, but we thought we should include it tonight just to allow that extra um, amount of public, you know, forum input on that um, design. Which is it's not a very elaborate design. It's basically changing the striping in the northwest corner. So right. it, we're no just going to go ahead and do it, but we want to make sure that people know we're doing it. That's that's great. Um, so I was just going to say, and if we're covering it later, that's fine. Well, I mean, no, it, it's part of this. Item, okay, so we could talk so, about it now. So I just wanted to say that. Well, thank you for providing it to us. I think it's you know it's something which is helpful in terms of sort of cleaning up and tightening the intersection a little bit. Uh, and we're talking about uh, Northwest Corner, Orange Grove, and Columbia. 
Um, what I noticed is that, so we have the, this is, I guess, the city of Pasadena's drawing where they've um, tightened up the right turn there and they've at, from Orange Grove onto Columbia. And then they have the edge striping along the north side of Columbia. Um, but the north, south side of Columbia, which I guess is ours, if you want to look at it that way, um, is naked. Uh, and I'm just wondering if it makes sense that it's equally wide on both sides of the street. It's a wide street. Does it make sense to do to implement the edge striping? Not necessarily the, the tightening of the corner, unless we think it's appropriate, but at least the edge striping on both the north side and the south side of the street. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. In fact, that's the kind of feedback we're looking for. And, I, so. and it seems like Pasadena, which I think is smart of it, is seems to be very sensitive about about not sort of unilaterally uh, proposing things for our side of the street. But I think this might be something that, and that John, I'm certainly interested in, in your thoughts. That seems logical and appropriate to include in the design is is the edge striping on both sides. Sure. Well, we we developed this together uh, between the two cities over a course of a couple of meetings. Okay. Um, but we, you know, as we would split up the work in our own jurisdictions, this would be that this would be the work they actually operate. They have two different departments or divisions that do the work. They'll design it in the Department of Transportation, and someone else will actually do the work. Aren't whereas, they lucky? Yes. <laughs> whereas we just kind of try to get it done between the few of us that were over here. So, um, so we'll. We can draft up our own striping plan um, to have our contractor do the same thing at the same time, or perhaps the same contractor. Uh, we'll try to make that as efficient as possible. We could do the same thing. I'd like to uh, indicate that I agree with uh, Commissioner Abelson that there should be <clears throat> an edge line along the south side to mirror what will be on the north side. And we'll point out that um, the entire roadway is in the city of Pasadena although the frontage of homes is in South Pasadena. So it is their street. We're working together. It would be appropriate, I think, if uh, they had their contractor implement the uh, edge line on the south side at the same time as the contractor implements that on the north side. Yeah, that, that'd be our preferred approach. And if there was a cost sharing necessary because of where the boundary line, we would address that, but that'd be our preferred approach. We'll just, you know, we'll take this. The whole point of this is was, uh, between the two cities. Let's start to get this done. Let's do the outreach we need to do on both sides. That's this conversation. So we can just get this done. Um, so thank you for the feedback. No, that's great. And thank you for pushing. It's nice to see at least something moving forward. It's, it, it's, and it's great that we're working together on it, two cities. And that's to your credit. So thank you. Um, and I, I had the same comment with regard to the, you know, as City of Pasadena had put together a design plan for Columbia at Pasadena Avenue, but they were going to have a dedicated left turn lane, right? And, and then there was some pushback because it was concerned about removal of parking on the south side of the street. Um, and, then, and then we had talked and specifically uh, Chair Fisher had uh, uh, provided input that, that the parking loss isn't necessary and there's a way to, so I'm just wondering since that's sort of, it seems like a simple striping, maybe it's not as simple as this and nothing is simple, but I'm wondering if, these kinds of seemingly O and M type of striping work items can be done while we're waiting for. And you're already on that path, but I'm just wondering if, since we're talking about this location, which is fantastic, is is can the same approach maybe be applied to Pasadena and Columbia? Um, it's yes, it's one level up from here and and a couple levels down from the relinquishment. You know, okay. long term work. It's in the in between. It's it's what Pasadena is calling a. Uh, we have it as our project, but they're calling it one of their transitional projects. And so you're right. What happened was they had proposed a certain configuration. We had got together. Um, we proposed a configuration. We drew it up, and they're actually using our drawing um, that they submitted to their um, consultant. So they've for this project, uh, they have a group of transitional projects which are along that um, passing in a corridor, and then on this section on Columbia that we're talking about. And so they've done um, focused outreach uh, on their on this whole group of projects, um, including some of their Pasadena residents. And so now their next step is actually expand that outreach to our city to address Columbia, um, so that that project can be included in the in that transitional work. So it's not exactly 
um, this sort of quick O&M restriping work that we're just going to notify people and get done. It's a, another couple steps farther, but it is in that near-term transitional work. And we're expecting um, that outreach to occur very shortly. Um, they've, they, already, they brought their consultant on board two months ago. Um, and so they've already done their first round and we're part of their second round. So, okay, great. Well, thank you for working so hard on that. Um, I had some other things, but I'm going to tighten it up. Um, okay. Let me just make sure. All right. Four quick things in no particular order. So the orange grove lamps. So we've already, it may have even been a year ago already, where there was an initial round of, of lamp replacement. Um, so I know you just brought this new operations manager on board, congratulations. Uh, I'm wondering if this is one where we already have a vendor that we used previously for the earlier round of lamp replacement. I'm wondering if this is something that at least the ball can start rolling quicker since we've already done it once and it's essentially the same location. It's the same project, so to speak. Um, and maybe we use the same person. Hey, we need another three. I don't know if it's that. I, I thought it would be uh, that simple. <laughs> <laughs> we um, we uh, have another similar lamp in a different part of the city. It's just one that we we're trying to get. We couldn't find a standard on it. Um, so, uh, to, to be continued, I'm not sure. I, I thought it would be an easy thing where we just reorder that, but I guess they're a little bit more, they're harder to come by. Oh, so that's one of the things that having the operations manager try to do is try to find um, who we can source those from and then actually buy more than we need uh, with the expectation that we might need more at some point. Yeah, once upon a time, we had extra. Yeah, we've used them all <laughs> up. Yeah, we've used them all up, which, unfortunately. Which suggests something, but that's another story. Yeah. Um, Slow streets. When, when do we start seeing, and I'm just focusing on the residential piece because that seems to be this, the easier to implement part or the quicker to implement part. When do we start seeing forward movement in terms of um, Alta getting back to the drawing board, so to speak, implementing our comments, putting together a plan and getting those signs and things up? Good question. Um, so we we have yet we have yet to get Alta back on contract. Our goal was to do that in July. Um, we're still on track for that because we got a we got a draft proposal from them that needs a little bit of tweaking. Um, but our July twentieth council meeting is getting really packed already, so we're trying to get our item in there. Um, but if that's the case and we're able successful in doing that and getting the contract in place, then we can start doing the slow, slow streets residential implementation um, right away. Um, so I, I, all we were planning on doing is basically a, a, another quick round of notification slash outreach with the residents so that they knew what was going on um, because it's been a little while since I heard about it, but we consider the design largely done and just moving forward with the residential section. Okay. There, is some, there is some tweaking that needs to be done to that design that we, when we provided input many moons ago, and then it just sort of, we never, there was no next step. Right, because right? we, so we ran out of money. I just want to make sure did, we don't forget yeah. that we had a co good conversation with Alta that one meeting and provided, they provided their presentation and proposals. And we said, looks great here, there, we need you to take a look at this, that, and the other, just on the residential piece. Yeah, you're exactly right. And that's why I, I was trying to convey that it's not quite done, but I don't want to give the impression there's tons of work to do because right. uh, all of those comments got saved and parked and no work's been done since. Right. I just um, want to make sure that so, yeah. the bookmark is there. Yeah. And we will open that book back up once you're the contract. Is yeah, done. we have that. And we also had our staff comments on the mission section that have yet to be implemented okay. into the next iteration for the business area. Okay. If you need any of us to advocate to make sure this gets on the July 20th agenda, let me know. No problem. Do whatever. I, I, I don't think it'll be an issue. Okay. Um, the, you know, just to expand on that, um, we are hoping for um, support of the local businesses on the mission 
street section to do what we've talked about uh, here at the commission in terms of doing this six month schedule. Um, so we have yet to engage those businesses on this again. And so that's where we might look for some um, support as in, on that project. This, this one will probably be relatively straightforward, but that'll be the one that, um, you know, uh, the timeline is sensitive because if we aren't able to implement it in enough time, we would have to wait until after the holidays implemented because we're certainly not going to start that project right you know at the end of the year my understanding and then my understanding with the chamber is that at least when we were first talking about this and went to glendora i think to take a look at what they had done that they were very energized and excited about it so i yeah would imagine that would still be so we're, we're hoping that's the same thing and that people aren't too concerned about us making those types of configuration changes in fact we think it's going to be a benefit um economically but that's that's where we think that uh we're going to need some assistance. Okay. I just said, I was just going to adjunct just as a comment that Lori uh, organizes the, uh, the chamber breakfasts once at least once a month or so. So that's that a good a way to, it might be one way to get it on the agenda for one of those that you could come and present and talk and also talk about the, you know, if you need to make mention of the farmer market plan and, you know, what's happening with transportation and, um, also, you might allude to the development, the planned projects that will be affected um, on mission. Yeah, we we started um, this month. We're starting a um, development newsletter uh, that is a joint effort between Public Works and um, Community Development that actually outlines some of these projects that will affect businesses in the city, as well as some of the updates on the housing side for some of these development projects. And so we're hoping that becomes a, um, you know, an avenue for communicating these types of things. So we haven't brought up the slow streets item on there just yet. We were focusing on, you know, the Fair Oaks project and other things we've been doing. Um, but yeah, that, that's one of those avenues also. Last question, incredibly quick. Kim covered it, but I didn't hear the specific answer. Neighborhood traffic management plan. When do you see that's been sort of hanging in the in the balance for quite some time. Do you have a sense of when that might go to council? I, I don't have that just yet. What we, from a management perspective and from a resource allocation perspective, I think that type of program belongs with our transportation position, the one who will be the liaison um, for the city and also you know, assist with this commission to handle um, the uh, the neighborhood traffic management plan, our preferential parking program, and also all of our um, coordination for this multi-year Pasadena relinquishment project. Um, where because because those are really um, program elements of what we do, and not necessarily engineering components of what we do, which we're saving for the engineering staff that we're bringing on board. So I, I you know I can. I can put myself in your shoes of hearing an answer of like, I don't know, I don't have it yet, but we, it is a formulated plan about how to bring everything together and to get it done. It's just that we don't have those resources in place yet. So I'm hoping that um, we are able to bring that transportation position before council in August, start the hiring process and have, a, have somebody on board by the fall to help us implement that program. Um, but that, that's what our plan is. Okay. Didn't you say that the position was already approved or did I miss here? It was, it was uh, everything takes many steps in the way how things work in South Pasadena. The budget has been approved for that position. The position itself has not been approved yet. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thank you, Ted. Of course. Thank you, Chair Fisher. You're welcome. Um, Ted, I, I had a few questions regarding the status or a few comments. On the north-south corridor, Fair Oaks Avenue ITS, I had always assumed, but I've never really asked the question, does that $8 million project include closed circuit television cameras? It 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 did and it and it does in theory. Um, so I had mentioned I had alluded earlier to some scope adjustments to that project, knowing what we now know about um, what was previously called phase one, which is the fiber optic installation. This project you're talking about was intended to be phase two. Um, 
I think what was going to happen with the interchange on ramp was intended to be like a phase three, but I'm not sure how these were all uh, previously fit together. So right now, the scope that we're working from um, has the cameras in it. But now that Public Works operates from Garfield, we wouldn't actually have the bandwidth to receive video data at Garfield because there's no fiber optic line that goes to Garfield. So we could um, still implement the, can the CCTV camera system and have it centered at um, City Hall. But to Cherry, um, to Commissioner Abelson's comment earlier, like who is watching the information? How are you using it? So we still have some unanswered questions about how we would utilize that data. Uh, of course, public safety has a use for that information, um, but we really wanted to use it for some other things. So uh, it is in the scope, but we have some challenging questions to answer. like, how do we incorporate it and what do we use it for? Okay, I would strongly encourage that the project include it. Now, City Hall is only a block and a half from Fair Oaks, and Fair Oaks will have the fiber optic line, and that should be sufficient to carry um, the closed circuit television camera views here to City Hall. So that's exactly what we're considering is expanding the design scope of that project um, to extend that fiber optic line up to the reservoir, but we haven't. Um, and We've kind of alluded to it and we've uh, we haven't engaged the selected contractor on it just yet. Um, we're well, still does it need to go to the um, Garfield Avenue um, site or can it go here to City Hall? Well, I'm sorry, it does go to City Hall currently. It's already installed to City Hall. It's just a matter of none of the transportation staff um, can access it from City Hall. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I strongly encourage that that be a part of the ITS program. Um, we found when we had our ATSAC system in LA and I was involved in implementing a, a system in Culver City, uh, you need cameras so that you're not operating blind. Your detector data and count data and all the data you're getting from your detectors and your fiber optic may not tell you the whole story. It may show that there's a sudden rapid increase in volume and you say, gee, what do we do? but you need to know what's going on. Is it because um, there's construction and they coned off a lane? Is it because of an, uh, a fire emergency is blocked lanes? You, you need to know that. And so you need to really see what's happening on Fair Oaks Avenue, whether it be at the interchange or at Mission or at Monterey or at Huntington. Now these cameras can see maybe as far as a quarter mile it would be very helpful to have this information so that you can interpret or understand why there's a change out there. We agree, yeah. I mean, the point was made earlier about um, what types of configuration opportunities do we have um, with the new system that we're installing on the controllers. And that's a very excellent point is that you wouldn't wanna make any sorts of remote changes without fully understanding what's happening in the intersection. So. Yeah, that is a critical element okay. of data to make that. Decision. And I would think the $8 million budget would have room to, to include that. It, it does, and it's okay. in there already, um, budgeted in there. It's just a matter of, um, you know, when we uh, move forward on these projects, we want to understand what our, uh, the problem that we're trying to solve and what our end goal is. Um, and so that's just something we need to, a good example is the issue that we're, dealing with right now in terms of connecting um, our neighboring cities and Metro into this network. We don't have an opportunity to do that right now because our fiber um, limits are basically at the ends of the city. Um, and so we're trying to resolve how do we uh, make that connection temporarily um, some, through some sort of translator that's over a copper um, signal versus like a fiber optic signal. Um, but to my, my point is that we want to plan these projects out accordingly that like the things that we're implementing, um, we can actually utilize in the, in the way we intended. And so my point with the cameras is that it is in the scope, but um, operationally, if we're going to be running the show from Garfield, we need to have a way to access the data to make those types of decisions right. before we even get started. So that, that's what we're trying to figure out right now. Okay. And I agree with your assessment that you wouldn't be able to have 
one whole staff person dedicated 100% to monitoring traffic. Hopefully, the software you get will identify patterns in traffic and will adjust the green times accordingly. Now, as you pointed out, when you prepare a timing chart, you know, you, you got to keep the yellow times constant. You got to keep the all reds constant. The um, pedestrian clearance time has to satisfy certain requirements. So the only interval you can change is lengthening the green. And uh, hopefully the software will be able to do that automatically, but it does require overview by a person, you know, who can identify anything special or odd going on. It, it does have all those capabilities, but, you know, you hit it right on the head there. Um, it's a matter of us having the appropriate configuration and um, really about the processes in place to sustain it. And so that's, you know, that's the type of planning that we're doing now so that when we're implementing things, we can actually pick them up and use them the okay. next day. Thank you. Uh, on the uh, Slow Streets program, um, as you may know, Count, uh, Commissioner Abelson lives on Hermosa and I live on Grand Avenue. When do you expect there will be the outreach to the residents to uh, inform them of what's planned? Um, it's one of the first things we have in the scope to accomplish. So if we're able to start the contractual work at the end of July, then we would be planning um, that for hopefully August or early September to do that work so that we can uh, lay the tape down that we need. August, to. September. Okay. Um, and regarding the possibility of um, reconfiguring the lanes on Mission Street as part of the Slow Streets project from the four lanes today to maybe three or two, uh, you said you're going to coordinate with the businesses along the street, but what sort of outreach will there be to the drivers that use this uh, minor arterial street? Sure. Um, so uh, there's a couple channels. Um, and I use that term really broadly that the consultants identified that we could utilize. Um, certainly the businesses is sort of like a, a local approach of having these, you know, mini neighborhood meetings about what's happening. Um, and then a lot of utilizing what the city has been doing recently with our website and our blogs and our social media and those types of things. Um, as far as reaching out beyond the city to drivers that might be passing through, I, I guess we'd have to come up with a strategy on how to do that. Cause our, our, um, focus has been mostly for people who would consume that information within the city. Um, but we could, we probably have some. Um, well, my, my question wasn't so much, how do you reach out to those who don't drive within the city who are going from, you know, LA to San Marino, uh, but how are you going to reach the drivers in South Pasadena who use Mission Street? Oh, um, well, um, a lot of that we expect to do through, um, you know, using the advertising um, tools that we have already to try to garner um, feedback on those types of things. Like we've done, um, hopefully they've been successful, some campaigns in trying to obtain feedback on, um, you know, refuse services, on um, priorities for the city, uh, things like that, housing, um, strategic plan. Uh, you know, I know um, uh, traditionally uh, there's only some component of the city that pays attention to those types of things. Um, so we would use those same types of um, resources, but would be very open to any other ideas in terms of like the reaching people in the city who don't um, typically pay attention. Would to those you plan to have an open house? Oh, oh yeah, most definitely a okay. uh, public meeting. And then also, um, so these mini um, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember the term. Um, Neighborhood meetings or the- uh, uh, Charettes, I'm sorry. There's like mini charrettes that we can have along the um, emission corridor because there's, uh, 
there's different concerns, even in, even as you move from uh, Fair Oaks to Orange Grove, there's sort of different concerns along that whole area. And so that's the public meeting um, about the project is one, but also sort of addressing the pockets is sort of an, another approach that we had in mind. Okay, thank you. Um, now regarding the Ramona Avenue, Oak Street, Rolland, Fremont Avenue traffic management, um, I have a request. Um, when this special task force of the MTIC commission looked at ideas for improving traffic flow and um, reducing parking in the residential neighborhood, it identified the project of putting the uh, school loading zone where there's currently red curb on the west side of Fremont Avenue. Um, we had hoped that would be implemented um, for the school year, which began last September. Well, we missed that. Now a whole year has gone on. And what I'm requesting or asking is, is it possible that even though you may not resolve all the issues here, especially with Holy Family School and Church, would it be possible to implement the loading zone uh, by August so that it can be ready for when the new school year starts? Um, I think it's possible. We still have to um, secure an understanding and a buy-in with the school itself. We kind of started that conversation a couple months ago and then it, we, we haven't resumed that since. But as far as getting it done, it's a simple thing to do. It's really just about getting that buy-in that we just haven't taken that step yet. When you say buy-in, you operate the streets. Certainly you want to coordinate with them. Well, why can't you just implement it and send them a letter saying you're now able and parents are now able to load on Fremont Avenue? Um, we could, but you know, we would it would be more successful if we implemented along with them. Um, you know, that's always an option that we could take, but our initial approach was to just to try to work with the school and getting it done um, so that there was an understanding between both of our institutions. But, you know, that is an option that we could just go ahead and do it if that, if that becomes, um, you know, infeasible. Well, are, are you able to meet with the principal during the summer months? Uh, I think we can. Um, the city, uh, I, I actually attended the, my first, um, South Pasadena Unified um, uh, Committee meeting uh, maybe a week or two ago. And so I think that might be a good forum for us to, the city has a forum with the school district. So I think that one might be a good opportunity to, to see this through. Okay, well, I, I recognize there are steps and processes and protocols that need to be considered. Um, my hope is that uh, we, you know, we could show some measurable degree of progress in implementing the loading zone that we've been discussing for the last year and a half. So if there's any way that you could move that forward in terms of talking to the school and getting the city forces available to put in the special signing and uh, curb markings, um, that would be my special request. Of course. For the new school year. Um, Chair Fisher, do you mind if I say something really quick? Sure. Okay. So, ditto, um, as the other member of that ad hoc committee. Um, second, uh, so I'm not aware of this committee that you just mentioned, but I don't think that's what you need. I think what you need is a simple, it's a simple conversation with the high school principal to let him know. To, I mean, I don't know what discussions already had. He's, he's, um, he was new a year ago open guy, friendly guy, nice guy, receptive guy. Uh, his name is John Eldred. Um, I think it's, it's, it shouldn't be anything more than a conversation, whether it's a meeting in person or a conversation. I'm assuming he might have some time off. I don't know how that works. Uh, I can certainly give you his email address, but I think if you have a conversation with him and tell him, here's what's being proposed, here's how it came about, um, here's what we plan to do, um, do you have any input? feedback and do it because I think really it's 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 painting a curb and putting in signs and that's right 
And like we've talked about, I and mean, it's been fully vetted otherwise over the past year and a half. Um, and I think if for some reason it's a colossal disaster, it's very easy to unwind. So I guess what we're saying is we're desperately asking for some things to get done that are feasible to get done short term, knowing that there's so many other things that are much more intense, complicated, and require a lot more steps. So I, I did have a conversation with, with the principal, John, a couple months ago, um, asked if he had, uh, you know, had any under, you know, thoughts on this. It was a, a few months ago. I, I don't want to misspeak, misspeak, but um, I think the conversation was, was kind of like, um, you know, uh, would that work with people kind of pulling over and then pulling out into traffic on Fremont? Um, and so my answer was that it's already set up that way instead of Holy Family, which is just the same one, you know, just across the street, basically, and it has the same um, width configuration as it does in front of high school. So we think it would work, but uh, we were supposed to follow up on that conversation and we just didn't. So we could just start back there again. Okay. I just, you know, at the end of the earth, at the end of the day, it's a traffic engineering decision, right? Um, and you're notifying the school. Um, and I mean, I'm very supportive of the school, so, but I think it's something that's going to help the school, right? Uh, and make things safer and sort of implement what is de facto already happening and make it a safer place. For, yeah, you know, it, it would take messaging from the school to direct, you know, parents or you know, whoever's doing the job to use that for that purpose and not um, uh, elsewhere. And all it is, by the way, is yeah. that, and then I'm sorry to take your time. I'm notorious for that. Um, it's a, it's the, the, at the end of the day, we're not trying to change the traffic flow of the school. What we're doing is trying to provide another safe mechanism and alternative, right? For loading and unloading, and that's it, mm -hmm. right? So it's not like, hey, school, we have a better way for you to function. It's here's something we're going to implement to it to support and supplement what's already in place. That's all. I agree uh, yeah. totally with Commissioner Abelson's comments, and um, I'm glad that you have already met with the principal. It was a full conversation. Yeah. Here, here's Here's what we're considering. Do you have any concerns? Do you have any input? And it sounds like we've gone through that phase. Now the next phase would be, um, Mr. Principal, we plan to implement this by the third week of August. You know, we discussed this back in May or whatever and proceed with it because it not only would be a safety benefit to the students and the parents who are dropping off students, but it also would show the residents in the Ramona Avenue area that we are trying to make a big step to resolve their problem of uh, high school traffic stopping on their street and loading. I, I did speak with a Ramona resident. They, they um, didn't think it was a good idea, the implementation. So, <laughs> so I, I am on having those conversations and, and that's to my point of like making sure that we've done not a perfect level of making sure everyone's on board, but a sufficient level of understanding of what we're planning to do and getting that feedback. And if we're making that decision anyway, moving forward, you know, as the authority on the issue, that's fine, but at least taking those steps. Um, and that's fallen on us. We, we haven't followed through on it. It's been a stagnant issue for a few months. So we will do that and, and try to see it through. Okay. Yeah. I, I, but they're on that, but can't we also, Coach it that this is a pilot too that we're testing this because as as you alluded to it's something we could easily change back and remove but again it's an it's an it's a step we're taking to address safety to help with the congestion and the dangerous circumstances that could happen when sure. we have the backups. That's it's a logical approach just doesn't always in the public atmosphere doesn't always turn out that way so we'll take the steps we can to try to mitigate that and then yeah, we can always pull back if we need you're to. You're not going to satisfy everybody. And I question whether the person on Ramona of whom you're speaking is a traffic engineer, <laughs> um, right? Because you're always going to have people with different views, but that's what we're here for. And you're here for, right? Is to make the recommendations and take the steps, right? Knowing that no matter what you do, someone is going to be upset. And that's, we, yeah, we're, it, I'm it's, happy to take the flack. Sure. It's not about being upset. It's about um, us being responsible to, to do that step that everyone expects us to do before we make a decision not everyone's gonna be happy with those, those decisions it's just a matter of us 
Um, when someone asks at the end of the day, well, did you reach out? Did you talk to the appropriate people? We want to be able to say, yes, we did. And this is what we concluded. Okay, I'm, I promise. <laughs> you can always say that item has been agendized at a public meeting, which is of this commission multiple times, right? So it is- In, Including to, tonight. Including tonight, so. That's true, yeah. Sorry, okay, I'm done, thank you. <laughs> All right, um, yeah, that's a special request. On the replacement of missing, of missing Orange Grove Avenue lamps, um, I believe all the ones that were put in were the short concrete lamps with the acorn uh, glass globe, kind of looks very 1925. Um, you may be under obligation to replace the lamps in that style. Looking ahead to the Orange Grove Avenue improvement where we provide a second lane to reach the Royal Seagull Parkway, you should look at the concept, in my view, of having those cute little lamps, but also interspersing them with modern lighting that's higher and shows the uh, light illumination down rather than the acorn lamps that throw it up. It would help, uh, I think, people negotiating the curve there. And I noted uh, when I was walking the street the other day, almost the entire length of the red curb on the west side from Oliver to the on-ramp, almost every length of it has tire marks on it. And I know you probably spray it red every two or three years to renew the uh, the paint. But uh, so those tire marks are probably only a, a couple of years old at the most, almost every foot of it. So uh, I, I think the um, modern street lamp lighting in combination with the cute little concrete lamps would again be a safety benefit for that. So just thought on that. Um, one last item, you indicated that uh, you were trying to get positions approved, trying to fill positions. Let me understand the process a little bit more. If you get it approved in the budget, the funding for a position, do you then need to go to council a second time to say, I want to fill this posi position with, with a certain individual? It depends on if the position exists already. So there's different, um, for example, um, you could have a position that's already approved in your organization that just isn't funded. And so once you can fund it, it's already approved in your organization and then you can just go out and get it. Um, so when we did this last round for the management analysts, for example, um, we got the uh, budget approved, and we also got them configured into the organization. And actually, council had opinions on where in the organization they would be. So they gave us direction, and we finalized that so they are approved. And since those positions um, were funded uh, in the organization and also had already been negotiated with the bargaining unit, with the, um, with the um, uh, employee association. Yeah, yeah exactly. We can act, those, those, um, we're just waiting on um, uh, getting um, into the queue with our uh, recruitment di division to actually get posted and recruited. And those actually were just posted maybe a week ago or so. So, how many well, but, but, oh, sorry, I want to add one thing. The transportation position is doesn't exist. It never has at the city, or if it has, it's you know long gone from any sort of organizational record. Um, so we actually have to get the funding, get the position approved with the council into the organization where it's going to be. Um, if you look at our org chart from the budget this past last week, it's like a faded gray because it hasn't gotten through that step. It just the money is approved. Um, and if it was a um, if there was a bargaining unit associated with it, then we would have another step to actually negotiate the position description with the bargaining unit. Um, in this position, we're actually looking for a management level position, so there is no um, unit. So once we actually get the position to approved with council, then we can just move forward. Uh, but you know, another similar type position would have required that extra step. 
And how long does that process take well, to, um, for a position that wasn't previously in the org chart? It's just, a, it's a matter of us um, uh, writing up the job, writing up the job description that's um, comparative, uh, that actually has a, um, a likelihood of getting filled. Like it's actually a reasonable amount of um, requirements of experience and background for the um, for the classification and for the salary, um, getting the salary established, and then going to council and getting it approved. So it's not a it's not a, a hefty amount of work. It's just work that falls into everything else we have to do also, and it's an administrative task. Um, so we're hoping to. We don't think we can get that done by July with everything else we're trying to get done for the July council meeting, including all these on call service contracts. So we're aiming for getting that transportation position approved in August by the council. Okay. Uh, I think it would be helpful when we have our uh, next meeting and our project status update. So much of the timeliness of the implementation depends on your ability to fill positions. So maybe if you could give us an overview of where you stand with filling positions. Um, I mean, I could give that to you now. Um, you know, I know it like the back of my hand because I've been working on it for a while. Is that uh, so? We had um, posted the senior engineer position. The senior engineer position was posted last year, um, and it was not filled. Um, and so we posted again earlier this year, and we received a few. Um, we received a few um, applicants, and we started the interview process um, maybe like two months ago, and we, there's several rounds of interviews. There's an outside Raider interview that has to happen from people from other cities. And so that's part of the step is to actually get those Raiders from other cities to commit to the same day and time where they all can show up and do the evaluation. And if you've got a lot of candidates, it's like several hours. I just did one for Pasadena that took all day Thursday and all day Friday you know, to, to go through all the candidates they had for a, for a field position. So um, we finished the second round of interviews a, a few weeks back, um, went through in the negotiation with the candidate, um, and then the candidate gave their two weeks notice, uh, and then we started them on Monday. So it's a few months just to get that position that was already approved in. So that was the senior engineer. And that's what senior, what area is that senior, senior engineer going to be working in? So the, the way our charge is set up, we have four divisions. We've got um, operations, water, environmental and then the engineering division so that position is in our engineering division and would work on uh, a major transportation project in this case we're hoping the fremont huntington project would be is going to be assigned to that engineer and then some other um engineering projects in the city um some other 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 uh, transportation projects but like a main cip project and then some other cip projects so that engineer wouldn't work on water projects though because you would have a separate engineer doing water. No, so, so that person potentially could is be split. engineering with you. If, yeah, you know, when you look at sewer and water lines. Right. So we only have one engineering position in the city right now. Uh, our associate engineer, who works mainly on transportation projects, but not completely. There's other things that um, she works on also. Um, so our in our current organizational structure, we can add two more. The senior engineer we just added, who also has other projects. And our civil engineering associate who also has other projects. So we basically um, focused a lot on transportation because that's a lot of our budget is on transportation projects. And then we've sort of um, spaced in some of those other CIP projects on there. But we're using a lot of the other staff to get projects done. Like we're engaging the water operations manager to be really heavily involved in water projects. Um, and then like, uh, I've been handling the stormwater um, CIP projects. So we, we try to space it out so that the, that staff can focus on the transportation work. We just have to fill those seat um, shoes. So with that said, quickly, I'll, I'll go through the others. The operations manager, um, we, we hired with within. Um, uh, Katrina, our park supervisor, was promoted to the operations manager position. Um, and that uh, we've been going through that interview process for um, I think a couple months, because again, you need outside raters and then you go through and then, and then you go through it that way. Um, the civil engineering, the civil engineer associate, 
we received applications um, some time ago and we selected um, the candidates that we wanted to hire. Um, I think interviews, have, the first round of interviews have been scheduled for next week. Uh, so once the first round of interviews we go through, we'll do the second round and select a candidate, hopefully in like three, four weeks. And then that person would give their two, three weeks notice and we hopefully see them on board in August, late August. And that's one position? That's the, yeah, the civil engineering. Civil engineering so, associate. Um, sorry, civil engineering assistant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's an assistant an associate and a senior, three engineer positions. They're and, all yep. new. Um, well, the associate is, is Tatovic, so she okay. used to be the assistant and is now the associate. But yeah, the assistant would be a new person. And then the senior is a new, is a new person too. So would the assistant be working with Tatovic on transportation related matters? Yeah, um, the assistant we have on focus on more of our um, would, would in essence take a lot of the operational transportation stuff off of Tatovic's plate so that Tatovic can help focus on more of the capital improvement work. Like for example, Tatovic is responsible for the traffic impact analysis reviews for development projects or for basically anything that happens in the city. Um, and so she would still maintain that for some of that aspect, but we would shift some of that work to the civil engineering assistant and then the civil engineering assistant would also take on some of the other capital improvement projects in the city that aren't so specialized to free up the senior engineer and the um, and also Tatovic to work on the transportation projects. So it's it's really about like kind of offloading and, and spreading the wealth on those other on that other work. Um, because we have a I think we have a $10 million CIP program this year. Uh, only a portion of that's transportation, but it's some of the more complicated work that we do. But eventually the the traffic transportation individual will take a lot of that. Yeah, I mean, our, our hope is that that position won't necessarily be um, have to work on capital level work. We'll be able to focus on a lot of this operational type of work. Like we talked about the implementation of the plans. Um, the coordination with the community, seeing slow streets through, seeing um, this little reputational work too. Exactly, yeah, yeah. because it it takes on, it's more of a a planning liaison role, hopefully some engineering experience in there, but you know, it's rare to get that. That would be kind of the person that would be the contact for Caltrans and Metro. Exactly, that that person would attend these meetings along with myself and Liana. Um, So yeah, and, and really be the uh, community, um, the community liaison, in addition to a liaison to the commission about those types of issues. Okay, uh, thank you, Public Works Director Gerber, for uh, giving us a thorough briefing on the project status update. Um, we'll move on now to agenda item number three review Commissioner Congress presentation. Um, I think, as you all know, there's a uh, there are, the city council is inviting all the commission members to attend a dinner, and there will be a short presentation by each commission on their um, work plan for the previous year and 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 for the coming year. Uh, you- uh, thank you, Chair Fisher. Yeah. Um, so that is a. I just wanted to mention that it's a public meeting. Um, and it's tomorrow night, uh, all commissioners and the council um, focused on uh, recognizing commissioners for all their service. So hope hope to see you all there. I'll be there. Are we all going to be there? Be there. Yeah. Uh, and I guess uh, we'll be making a um, five minute presentation. So it won't won't be as thorough as a project status update, but it'll just we'll just hit the highlights of the uh, projects we've developed and hope to implement. Um, any further discussion on this? Ted? Um, yeah, the only thing I was going to say was, um, you know, you'll look at it. It's it's uh, a simplified um, list. We uh, we we considered 
um, comprehensively talking about the projects, but as Chair Fisher had mentioned, it's really only like a three minute presentation to touch on things. Uh, Commissioner Fisher, I'm sorry, Chair Fisher had the idea to um, map what we're doing, just sort of an overview of all the work that's this commission's engaged in now and, and looking forward to this year. Um, and so uh, it's a simple presentation, just two slides. It's already been uh, submitted and it's in the program for tomorrow night, but um, you know, if you, if you do have any comments that perhaps could be uh, directed to the verbal part of the, um, the presentation, uh, I'm sure Chair Fisher would, would uh, entertain that, entertain those comments. Right, my intent, given the short time we have, will just to tell them what the commission does and uh, what types of transportation projects we're looking at. You know, we wanna make sure that we cover all the modes, traffic safety projects, pedestrian enhancements, bicycle facilities, and um, safety projects and, you know, transit and unlike that, we're trying to look at it all. Um, <clears throat> and I think the uh, comp accomplishments for the year 2021 were mostly identifying projects and getting them started. And the uh, focus for 22-23 will be to start to implement many of these projects, including the uh, street resurfacing projects. So what we have here is just is intended to show that we have projects at many points in the city. and. Um, it is, it's a very simplified map. Yes. One thing might be to make sure we understand what closed loop is, but we might be more specific to define what it is and how the 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 actual physical purchases purchases that have been made and the parklet concept and the enhancements that we're referring to Mission Street, and also to kind of commend that how this was really a, a vision that really was birthed also out of the pandemic and to enhance business things that can go into this, but also how it can continue on and be a benefit in the future, even though it's sort of a test. That, that's a good idea. Thank you for that. I have a uh, few comments. Yes. Yeah. So um, I thought what was going to happen is this a draft was going to be put together and there was going to be a conversation that included me. And then there was also going to be a decision as to who was going to present it because I was the chair last year when these things happened. I'm happy for you to do it. I was going to suggest that you do it anyway. Um, but so I'm a little disappointed that I wasn't included. Um, but it's that's fine. But it seems like we should be talking about maybe this is part of your moral part. When you look at also part of our agenda packet is what we've accomplished, you know, and I know that's a different report. Um, it seems like that should be part of the conversation because what we, right, we, we preliminary worked on um, loop ramped design, loop ramp design, that's not a huge thing. And that doesn't need to be something we talked about, but I wanted to just note, we came up with the, with our own suggestions for managing traffic in and around the high school in Ramona. We did that last year. We came up with a preferential parking program proposal, um, at least, you know, broad brush. We came up with, uh, again, a neighbor, a proposed neighborhood traffic management plan. We came up with suggestions for managing traffic on Meridian, um, including a control at a certain intersection, but, um, the Measure M projects, um, and then I have S slash S, and I don't remember what that means. Slow streets, which is our, which is here. So I'm just wondering. It sounds like this is already done and been submitted, which is unfortunate. But I'm um, at a minimum, maybe great if we could, because I think we did some pretty impressive work last year, and I think more than what this suggests. So it'd be great. And I know it hasn't all been implemented, but that's okay. I mean, we're just talking about what we as a commission, I think, have worked on. I think I think it's impressive, and I think people might be interested in hearing it. Well, maybe um, that could be mentioned with what Chair Fisher mentions under this, you know, slow street. Yeah, they may be all. And then under 
and then congestion relief. We can talk about Ramona. You could talk about Meridian. You could talk about, you know, I'm, I mean, maybe we just quickly mention under examples of these, under these being the broad umbrella. I mean, what do you, what do you guys think? I just... um, well, I have, I can respond unless you'd like to speak first, Chair Fisher. Um, but so I, all the things you're saying are in our um, talking points. Uh, okay. We had them listed on the slide initially, but the feedback, and we had talked about this, uh, I talked to the Chair Fisher Brothers, was like, there's a lot on there, um, and it's a big room, and it might be hard to see, so we tried to <laughs> narrow all of those projects into, like, conceptual points, and then um, Chair Fisher had planned on talking through all those items, so we actually have, right. you, know, uh, you know, eight or so talking points that include what we're talking about, um, and we have to probably discuss a little further, but that was what our thoughts were. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and um, I th Commissioner Abelson, I think you reminded me that at the last meeting, we did indicate we would um, loop this in with you. I think what fell apart was I was out of town 13 days. I just got back Sunday. Monday was a holiday. So I saw this, what, Monday evening or Tuesday, or I think Monday evening was, was it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I had seen an earlier version of this while I was using my laptop while I was away. And you're right, we accomplished a lot more than what's shown here. But I've always held in any presentation I've made, I've always tried to stick to the rule of 15, never put more than 15 words on a slide. I see some people put something on a slide that they would use if they were reading it. And you can never see it. Right. You can never see it when you're in the back of the room. So to, to that point, uh, Commissioner Abelson, our actual first draft of this was just copying the annual report on the first slide and copying the work plan on the second slide. <laughs> um, and so we tried to just narrow it um no because I, I only yeah. saw what you gave me. Right, i didn't know right. you yeah I, these fantastic we, talking points so right yeah so i i apologize because we didn't loop you in on on the final of it and uh it was more or less because of i, I forgot that's okay so i'm sorry about yeah that. and i did I mention last meeting that we would uh i thought we'd have an opportunity to refine this tonight as far as the slides go. But the reason I mentioned that it was finalized was that I found out uh, yesterday and today that uh, that the slide part of it was finalized and that we wouldn't have an opportunity tonight. I, so I had mentioned that also in our last meeting that that was our hope was that since it was the day before we could incorporate any changes to the visual of it, but we still have an opportunity to make changes to the oral component of it. Okay. So, so were the, were the items Thank you guys for putting it together. I think it's it makes a lot of sense what you've said. And were the were the items I mentioned are those things you were planning to bring up in terms of accomplishments? Yes, I more or less. More or less. I mean, I, I've got to keep it to just a few minutes. And when you start to say measure M, measure R, no one else is going to know what that. Means. Oh no! So I understood. We're, I understood. I'm, we're, I'm going to have to talk kind of generically. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it like the 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 high, the high school Ramona stuff, the preferential parking, the neighborhood traffic management, Meridian, because that's sort of a high profile mm -hmm. location in our city that we've spent just to let everyone know the types of things that we're working on, without right going into mind numbing complexity and detail. Yeah, great. Well, thank you guys for putting it together. I appreciate it, and I look forward to it. Yeah, I, um, it'll be my first commissioner of Congress, so it should be interesting. I mean, we it was a it was a couple years one. ago. There's only been one. And it was a good event. Well, there's been at least two, but uh, the last one was in February of 2020. Oh, was it right before? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Right before. <laughs> we won't mention what it was. And we said, "Oh, look what's going on in China." <laughs> Little did we know. Right. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments on the uh, commissioner meeting tomorrow? Okay. Um, we'll go to information item number four, review the list of street resurfacing projects. 
And um, Director Gerber, we don't need to approve this. This is just for our information now. That's correct. Um, so as we discussed during our May meeting, um, we didn't request um, a recommended list from MTech for this year, because what we found was um, there was at least three and a half million dollars of just pavement work included last year, and that exceeded our um, entire street resurfacing budget for the year. So we were actually just able to uh, submit, we're in the process of submitting to the state to saying that we are including 2020 to 2023 SP1 funding in the existing list that we already have. So that that money will apply to what you see here. Um, so we'll have that conversation again this coming fiscal year and get the recommendation as we typically do from um, MTech to bring to the council. But what we asked of the council this year was just to basically roll the money into the existing um, street list. So um, what you'll see here, and uh, we did a detailed assessment of, of each of the streets that was um, had been recommended each year by uh, this commission or, the, or its predecessor and identified the status of each of those street segments. Um, so if you go to um, page, uh, well, it's, it's item four and it's uh, listed uh, page 14-2 because this is the, the report from the council meeting. Um, this is where we start to show what's been constructed, what's uh, we've completed design, um, what's pending design, and um, what is under design. And our plan is basically to take to break this into two groups. Um, that is everything that's uh, in design or design completed to wrap up the design work and actually bid about two years worth of street resurfacing work at once so that we can begin construction on that this year and then enter into about two years of street design work at once so that we can um, work through the design process this year and hopefully start uh, construction by the end, by close to the end of the year or perhaps early next year. Just a quick question. So am I understanding that the group we allocated the undesignated funds was money so all the money had been approved from 2018 19 19 20 one approved and is it in un, is it been held in undesignated or in the capital improvement budget but we have the, the 3.5 million to cover what you're saying two years worth of streets to get into construction uh, yes, except for the it, we've actually designated it. It's 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 held into its own account that can only be used for street improvement work. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there's about um, there's about uh, a little over two million dollars that the city is holding into that street improvement um, budget, and. Uh, the SB1 money that we've earned over the last couple, oh, I shouldn't say earned, that we've received over the last couple of years is a, is a little over a million dollars. Um, now we still have to do the work to justify spending that SB1 money because we may have not met our maintenance of effort these last few years in order to spend that money. Right, so, so it- Like 18 or so. 17, 18 where we right. otherwise we didn't and then we had a, a less you know a past year and then we didn't we didn't make the requirement. Yeah, so we we've talked to the state about this a couple of times and we do have some avenues that we can take strategically to try to address that issue so that we can utilize that money moving forward. But we've separated that money out into a different account so that we um, don't spend it until we know that we can spend it. Um, and then apart from that, this year, we've allocated about another million dollars from various funding sources to, to utilize for street repair. So all in all, we've got, um, you know, at least $3 million that can be used 
and upwards of four to somewhere to five that uh, could be used if we're if we've um, if we've met all the requirements to use it, I should say. So um, that would go towards uh, design work and, and construction. Uh, Commissioner Abelson. Thank you, Chair Fisher. So, and you may have said it, I missed it. What is the near term timeline for getting streets repaved? We expect to repave streets this this fiscal year. Okay, and, um, the, and those would be the ones that say design completed pending construction. Would it just be those, or it would be more than that? It would be more than that. <clears throat> it would be um, design completed pending construction, and under design, because the idea here is if we are if we're at sixty percent with our design work, and hope to get to ninety percent in the coming months, we would actually <clears throat> bid. A large construction package package for all of the all of the designed work pending this construction and the newly designed work so that we can be all constructed at once it, it's a lot less effort for the bidding process and since we're using so many different funding sources we have various rules we have to follow with the bidding process so it makes sense to actually do it all together and then we can have um you know a single contractor team whether it's multiple contractors on the same team but you know, under a, a single singular contract to coordinate the work throughout the city. So, um, you know, because there's obviously there's going to be significant impact to do this many streets in a in a in a given year. So that is our that's our approach. Okay. So, just to to put it sort of give it some concreteness. So we're talking about the 2018-2019 list, the the first number of streets here that say design completed pending construction so those and then we would skip to the top of the next page the 2019 2020 list there are a few there that say the same thing design co completed pending construction and then the 2021 list all those that entire list is under design that would be part of what you just talked about that's everything right. else that says pending design that's a, that's another project that's further in the future um, yeah, but not too far because as a separate effort, when we have our um, team in place in July and August, we would start that design process overlapped with the other design process. There's no need to do them uh, concurrently. We can do them in parallel. Okay. And, and you know, in the past, we would, we'd have lists where we were talking about um, street reconstruction, which maybe is what all of this is. I'm not sure. And then we would have a separate list, it's a slurry, Cape Seal, that kind of thing. The slurry, Cape Seal, that those kinds of projects is, are those part of what we're seeing before us, or that's a different set of streets? And the reason I ask mm -hmm. is because one of the slurry, Cape Seal type projects that we approved a few moons ago, there were a number of them. One of them was Grand Avenue, and I just looking at this at these lists, I didn't see it anywhere. So I thought I'd ask, like, is that a separate? No, it's a good question. <clears throat> it's mixed. So each year, each year the city did it differently in terms of what they put into their SB1 resolution. So um, this is all the street work that's been approved by the council through that annual process. There's additional streets that are on our internal slurry list based on the pavement management index. Um, and they're not represented here. And some of them are, because if you go to the, if you go to the most recent year, how there were, there's so many streets that includes, that. that includes that it not only includes that, but it also included the, the 21, 22 list that you see that starts on 14, three and goes all the way to 14, five includes the resurfacing projects for 21, 22, the, you know, um, Repair projects, we'll say the the Cape Seal or um, uh, slurry seal projects, and it also includes a handful of resurfacing projects that were intended to be on the twenty two twenty three um, list. That explains it, because my next question was going to be looking at this lengthy list for twenty one twenty two, and I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, no, no I'm glad we're talking about I'm an expert at this. Interrupting that is. Um, there's some of these streets I don't recall 
ever discussing. So, right. So, <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of cleanup to do here. Um, a lot because we're not only are we trying to resurface streets that have already been designed. I mean, that that's something we just need to move forward with, regardless of how they're selected, because we have them designed and they need to be done. Um, we have money that's already been appropriated by the state and by our council on other streets to design. So again, we need, just need to move forward with those because they have to get done. So we're basically just moving forward with everything that was a council approved, regardless of how it got on this list. Um, so with that said, uh, th that's one of the reasons we're showing you the baseline list tonight so you can understand what's happening regardless of how it got here. Um, the next steps are uh, number one, uh, basically going back in time with the assistance of our future management analyst team to vet the expenditures that the city has had on street resurfacing work for the last couple of years so that we can attempt to justify um, our maintenance of effort, which is our minimum amount of money that we have to spend in order to retain, in order to use SB1 funds. The city's already received the funds. We're not sure if we actually can retain the funds because we have to demonstrate that we've met the requirement. So there's several different ways we can meet the requirement. We can also have the requirement um, lowered, but that takes, uh, a significant amount of financial research to prove that the amount should be lowered. Um, so that's an effort that we are, we're starting to take on to keep our money basically um, and to make it cheaper to get money in the future. Because if we can lower our maintenance of effort uh, in the past, it also applies to the future. And so next year we can get um, the ratio of money that we receive from the state would be higher compared to the money we have to spend. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, so that's the first effort. That, the next effort, also part of our, we've received um, proposals from in our on-call process for pavement management services. It's been three years about since we've done a pavement condition index. It's time to do another one. Um, I don't think anything's changed. It's only gotten worse, right? Yeah, I mean, it might have gotten, it might have gotten worse. <laughs> um, and so in that process, uh, we need to look beyond the annual um, evaluation of which streets to select. We need to be able to, to somewhat predict um, where our streets are going to be in the coming years so that we can target the amount of money that we have to spend um, moving forward to actually bring the average payment condition index across the city to um, an acceptable level. And we have to decide what that acceptable level is. Um, so with that said, there's a lot of work to bring forward before the commission uh, in the coming months to have those discussions and have a long-term plan for street resurfacing that's sustainable um, for, the, for the future. And so we would have to basically, um, you know, the streets that are on here are on here, but we want to take a look. We would want to work with the commission in terms of um, not just selecting the next round of streets for our submittal next year, but having a pretty predictable understanding of which streets are coming down the pipe so that there isn't any surprise um, streets, I guess you could say, on the list. Okay. So are you saying that you have or expect to have the funding to do to cover all of these streets, um, including this lengthy... 21, 22 list and, 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 and not, you don't need to give me a like definitive answer because I'm guessing the answer is not, is no, but I may be wrong. And, and the only reason I'm suggesting this is that if you get to a point where, and then I'll let you answer, if the, that there is not, then, you know, feel free to use this as a resource because I'm looking at this list and I don't quite, quite understand that some of these streets are even on here. Um, so, but if there's, capacity to do all of it, then terrific, or capability. If not, then maybe that's a conversation later. I don't know. We have enough money for the work that we can do this year. Um, next year might be a different question because some of the streets that you're seeing on the pending design might not be constructed until, or not, might not be resurfaced until next year. 
So that's part of this evaluation to see what's a sustainable amount of money and how do we look at funding that? Um, do we have to look at bond measures? You know, we have federal money that we can utilize, but uh, there's, that's an intensive process to, to receive those types of funds. Um, so there's a lot of planning efforts. So the answer is kind of yes and no. We have enough money for the foreseeable future, what we plan to get done this fiscal year as we budgeted it. Um, beyond that, there's a, there's the needs, the needs exceed what um, we're able to, what we're able to um, get in terms of revenue each year. Okay, so at a minimum, and then I'll stop. Sorry. Um, the design completed pending construction items and the under design items, those we, you expect to, that we would see construction occur the current fiscal year. That's our plan, yes. Okay. 22, 23. The others might be further off. Maybe depend the that design process, which would also start this year. So the design process would be covered uh, uh, for the other streets would be just covered under this year. The construction, we're not so sure. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yes, quick question. Okay, I'm going back, looking at the list from, this is 2019, going back, like, the Brunswick Avenue from Cole to St. Albans, we did, uh, it was a PCI of 33. It was $150,000. But then we get into like this particular list was 2.4 million, but it included um, the fact that like Indiana Avenue from Indiana Terrace to Via Del Rey, again, I have to match it back over here, but it was a 48 PCI. And it was going to be at least three hundred thousand because it needed to have the water main replaced. So one of the issues is again looking at the individual streets and making sure that are we considering what we need for the water, and or the curb gutter ADA, so that we'll, if we're going to do this, we're doing it. And then the other concern is at when we go back to a lot of these streets, um, we had some that. Um, impacted Meridian way back when, 1819. And we know we've got more projects. Now we're also looking at some of the slow street path and how that might impact some of these streets. So I just wanna make sure that when we do a list, that we're doing the list of, even if we don't, if we do the design, is it worth doing? Because there's something else that might be more important because it's, it's gonna impact because of other things we're doing there. So I, I worry that we, we need to look at the whole picture of every element of every possible street. And um, we did the the uh, pavement assessment. You said it was three years ago, right? So everything would have gotten worse. But we did a whole presentation and plan and a whole, I can pull it out, looking at every single street with a 10-year, I remember correctly, plan that was going to do deal with it and how it was going to be scored and and um mr abbas we did this whole thing and i don't even know what where is that <laughs> what happened to that and i just worry that we need to look at everything again in totality because we're trying to pay catch up but what can we really afford to do and is the priority yes it's approved but even if it's designs completed is it the right street to do even though you got the design or is another street more important because other things impact it yeah, great question. So to answer the first one um, with regard to utility money, that is the, the, for the numbers I gave you don't include that, we've actually funding that separately. So for every street that we're doing that requires water and sewer improvements, we have separate funding that won't pull away from our street improvement funding to fix those, fix that. And, and part of the um, board effort is uh, coordinating uh, the condition of the water system, the condition of the sewer system with the condition of the pavement, which hasn't been done previously, um, in, in more efficiently spending. That's a way the city is going to save money in the future um, because, you know, resurfacing a street, and this happened, resurfacing a street to only have a water break on it and have to cut it up to fix it uh, doesn't really bode well for efficient government spending. So, so that's that's a very 
good point, and that's an aspect that we need to consider in this. The pavement management plan that you looked at, um, where you were looking at what the pavement condition index would be over a 10-year period, those numbers did not include any of the concrete curb and gutter work. The numbers you were looking at only included pavement only resurfacing. However, when the city does a project, they do include the, the curb and gutter in the work. So it was another reason for us to not select more streets this year because we're already in a deficit for the money we've set aside in the past years because it doesn't fully account for the true cost of the project. So that's one issue there. So, so yes, that plan does exist, but it has to be um, updated both for condition, but also updated for the realistic needs of an infrastructure project and how we spend the money. It's an interesting point, though, because when we would look at it, we would ask that question and get the ask the estimates of the cost of each individual street that was supposed to reflect everything that was needed. So, you know, it would it's often said here needed as you say, utility or whatever. Um, so yeah, I mean the costs that were presented here are, are straight out of the pavement management plan, and they 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 explicitly state it's it's only pavement condition and and cost at that in those dollars from that year. So so that's a <laughs> deficit that we have to consider realistically. Um, you mentioned one other item about the coordination transportation project. So if you go back to our um, our presentation that um, Chair Fish will be, will be giving uh, tomorrow night. You see, we presented two maps, and one of them is laying out in our GIS system all of the transportation projects that we intend to work on this fiscal year. And then the second map, um, if yours is in color, it's one of the first maps in red and the second map's in blue, that lays out, you know, for the first time, all of our um, planned street resurfacing work in our GIS system. And so we can actually, you know, in a future meeting, show you this by project status, um, you know, whether it's construction pending in fiscal year. Um, and so that is one of the tools that we'll be utilizing in overlapping where our transportation priorities fall and where our street resurfacing projects fall. For example, Fremont and Heinton is an excellent example of that because we have a $16 million budget for that project, uh, it would behoove us to spend our existing street resurfacing money on, on that where we can make those types of improvements through that grant funding that's already allocated. So um, we're not gonna blindly move forward on things without considering all those aspects because we need to squeeze every drop of efficiency that we can out of the spending for the, for the coming years. Thank you, Commissioner Hughes. Um, I thought by this time you used a factor that includes curb. And I think you know from prior experience that you replace whatever, 25, 30% of the curb lines. And I thought there would be a factor for that so that your cost estimate would be a little bit more realistic to include the curb and gutter work. We'll do that moving forward because when we, as we do the um, assessments in the future, we'll want to include that. Um, the condition of those assets, those facilities in this. Um, I, I don't think that the factor has been utilized in the numbers you have or have had in the past. I don't have those on mine, but I, I think Commissioner Hughes, you're probably looking at a previous report. Yeah, this is, this is sure. Um, I don't have them in front of me on this report, but I've been familiar with the um, with the report and the numbers for the you know, I, there's a possibility I could be wrong, but the numbers granted for only pavement work match the numbers that we've submitted on the SB1 um, okay. reports. Um, the adopted 2021-2 list is on pages 14, 3, 4, and 5. Is that what this commission approved? Um, I'm not sure. I went based on what the council had approved. I didn't cross-reference this against what the commission approved. This would have been last summer, I guess, last May or June. Because we've always been told that there's roughly $2 million per year for resurfacing projects. I don't remember this commission approving a list of 61 projects for one fiscal year. Um, there hasn't historically been $2 million a year. 
Um, we, these last, in looking at the last few years, we haven't spent more than, even in before the COVID, we hadn't spent more than a million, maybe about a million. It was only recently in this past um, budget that the council appropriated $2 million from the general fund for street repair, unless there's funding that wasn't documented, which is um, maybe it was spent, but it wasn't. Uh, so let me, let me trace back a little bit. It's possible that there was more money spent than was budgeted. In other words, like the council at the beginning of the year had decided, well, we'll only budget 1.1 million, but for some reason, the city actually spent $2 million on street repair. So that's, that's that evaluation that we have to go back and do because it matters what we spent and not what we budgeted to answer your question about whether it was $2 million a year or not. Well, but I guess I don't understand in the prior fiscal years, there was anywhere from six to 18 projects per year. We come to 21, 22 and we show 61 projects. I cannot imagine in my mind how there could be enough funding to design and, and construct those. There wasn't, and that's why we basically did a carryover this year and not asking you to add more projects because there was more than enough projects to the funding that we could possibly spend. Um, I mean, one discrepancy may have been in the past years, you were only asked for, um, or uh, only actual mill and grind projects were shown on the list, which is why they're so short. Whereas this past list, it shows both those um, resurfacing and also the slurry seal projects. That is probably one discrepancy, but I, I don't know if there was, if there's a difference between what you're seeing here that was approved by the council versus what you approved as a commission. We can, we can take a look at that if okay. you'd like. Uh, but the bottom line is that for the 61 project shown in fiscal year 21-22, you believe there is enough funding to cover those? No. Um, I believe there's enough funding for the construction work that we would be we, we can accomplish this year, which would include um, the, the prior years you're looking at. Um, as, as far as if we have enough money to construct the, you know, I, I haven't counted them, but if it's 61 projects on this list, I don't know that we have that amount of money. But, uh, but the other thing is that we wouldn't be able to construct all those projects this year. Um, they would most certainly be into next year. And we haven't addressed um, the street resurfacing budget for next year just yet. So we have the 21-22 approved program. What is the 22-23 program? So the 22-23 program, um, so what you're looking at here, um, as far as per fiscal year, is you're looking at what the city council has committed to improving to the to the effect of getting state funds to do it. So this list is really what they're putting forth for SB1, correct? Yes. But what you're saying is to really what we could really do would be if I look at this list, it would be Alta Vista Avenue, design completed pending construction, correct? Yes. Then I would be looking at Monterey Road design completed pending construction. And then Monterey Road, the second Oro Verde Pasadena, design completed pending construction. And then Sterling, design completed pending construction. But then none, none of the pending. Next page would be Alta Vista, design completed pending construction. And then Monterey Road, design completed pending construction, Monterey Road, those are, those are duplicates, I think. But then the others would be the 2021 under design, as many as you think you could do, but then you need to cost all that out. Yes, but I, I think that at a minimum, we can do everything you just mentioned and, and more, but probably not the entire list you see before us. N not all the under design. Um, well, no, we can, I think we can do all the under design also. But not the pending. It's not the it's the pending design that we would probably make it somewhere through the list, but not completely with the funding that we have already. Okay. So the 22-23 program is what you show us the 21-22. Um, it's basically a, a combination of things that Commissioner Hughes mentioned. It's some elements of the 1819. It's some elements of the okay. Well, let me put it this way. 
we're, we're kind of talking about two different things. We're talking about what the city can actually pay for and accomplished in 22, 23. And then we're talking to, we're, that's one list. And then we're talking about what we're going to request funds from the state for to build in 20. And that's our 22, 23 request. So our 22, 23 request from the state is the pending design work where we have yet to request that money. We're doing it this week because it's due by July 1st to request new money on top of what we already have to build the pending design projects. As far as what our 2223 program looks like, as far as like what we're actually on the ground getting done, it's elements of the 2018-19 list, elements of the 1920 list, and elements of the 2021 list, basically. So there's a lag for the SB1 work. Yes, yeah, there always is because you're basically putting forth money, you're requesting money for projects that you're going to do, and then you get that money and then you start the work. So it's, it, it's you know, ideally it's a year, um, but in our case, we have a few years to catch up and then get back on the annual schedule. So for all the projects listed for 21-22 that are pending design, um, would you expect to construct those projects within three years after the design? Most definitely, yes. In fact, for the to, we have to we're supposed to um, spend we're supposed to spend our component of the state money. If you think of it as a matching grant, where we put forth this certain amount of money and then the state puts forth a percentage of that, we're supposed to spend that in two over a two year period. So the answer is yes. Okay, all right. I know it's confusing uh, for you that are all very much educated on the subject. It's confusing. So we can imagine how confused this is for the council. So what we're trying to do is bring forth a comprehensive discussion on this to sort of explain everything. We think that will be in about you know five, six months when we hope to have everything figured out and to have a longer term plan. Um, so we can you know engage with this commission about that. Um, process. We did something similar for water in April. We did like a state of water where we explained the condition of the assets, explained our long-term planning for um, fixing them and how that will work over the years. So we now we want to do that for the street program. So Ted, all the uh, projects shown on pages 14.2 through 14.5 are represented on the second slide that we're going to show tomorrow. Is that correct? Yes, that blue slide is all the projects with a couple exceptions where there was errors in our GIS system that didn't don't capture that street. Um, like 90 plus percent okay. of the streets are on that blue right. slide. Okay, any further questions on this? Commissioner Hughes? If there's, there were streets that were on the list back 20, this is 2020, 2021, it's not reflected anywhere on your list. Did they just disappear? Um, well, I mean, they, they won't disappear because we only have so many streets and we know about all of them. And so they'll be on a list at some point. Um, but they did disappear in the sense that like they weren't um, approved by the council for resurfacing. Do you have an example of that? Um, yeah, look at Caraman, which was supposed to be on 2020, 2021 from Hill to the cul-de-sac at a PSI of five, and it was gonna be $150,000, including a water, uh, water main replacement. But I don't see Harriman on anything. So, so that might be, you know, there's a lot on here, but it might be a few up from uh, the bottom of 14.4. These are all pretty much alphabetical and I'm not seeing them. Um, there's one uh, Harriman from Hill to uh, cul-de-sac. That might be the one we're talking about. I'm, I'm not sure if that's the one they mean. On 14-4? At the, oh, about five up from the yeah, bottom. Just, then all the ones that we had for Surrey or Slurry, um, that will be addressed when you just determine the new study and slurry. So we're not going to do any slurry in until we get the new study? No, no, we would move forward with um, slurry um, as we have approved, um, with the exception of 
areas of the city where it might not make sense to move forward with slurring because we have some other project coming in in short order, a relatively short order to do that work. Uh, unless, you know, there's a, if the decay is like Fremont Huntington, we have three and a half years to complete that project. Um, so if I don't know the specific condition of either of those streets, like down to the, down to the um, roadway, but if uh, we would want to theoretically wait, um, but if the condition is so much that it's going to drop off rapidly over the course of the years where a slurry might be a good cost effective measure, then we would want to move forward with it. I'm just worried about this. The list, which was the 1920 slurry list, was up to $291,000. And I'm not seeing all of these because they were slurry, you know, slurry plants reflected obviously in the construction list. So I worry because some of them you wanted to keep, you wanted to have them remember a certain level so that the slurry would keep them to, you know, for longevity. And we had some that were in the fifties and I'm not sure where, you know, where are they today? Yeah, they, they and might. Then are they now going to fall into, they're going to need construction. They may have. Um, and so that's the evaluation that we have to do is uh, try to catch some of those. So there is not a current plan to proceed with the slurry work that was proposed previously. Um, like you are with the reconstruction. There, there is, um, there is some, um, there is some slurry work that was identified as part of this, um, the, the current design work. Uh, Cause slurry doesn't really um, require too much of a design. Right. Um, so I, I have to get back to you on that about, I know we have slurry plans in place for streets. Maybe so maybe they're just not represented here because they never were. Um, so we can follow up with that. That's a good question. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to draw this item to a close. We've already exceeded our two hours. So we'll now go to uh, action item number five. Approval, approval of the minutes of our May 17th meeting. I have a couple of things. Yes, Commissioner. No, nothing significant, just, and I'm gonna skip the NITs. Um, under information reports, number two, uh, second to last line that starts selective representation I think it's just a select a represent a representative. Um, under an item item three, second paragraph, second line starts bin spending. Uh, I think just take out the word two, bin spending the level required. And then the very next line, it says, especially in lieu of the pandemic, I think it probably in light of the pandemic. Um, next page, and again, I'm just I'm going to hit just a couple of, so uh, under communications, item six, second to last line that starts military equipment, um, actually skip it, it's minor, it's not worth it. Um, That's it. The other, these are all minor, so it's not worth it. Those were the only couple of corrections I wanted to make. Uh, thank you for catching that. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Oh, I'll second. Okay. <laughs> moved by uh, Commissioner Hughes, seconded by Commissioner Abelson. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Unanimous. Thank you. And we go to. Our annual report for the, oh, our annual report and fiscal year 22-23 work plan. Uh, so tonight we um, are bringing back the draft annual report that was uh, presented a few months back. I apologize for the time it took to get it back here, um, but you know, appreciate all the work that we've done since and, and uh, all that important stuff. So um, 
the, the annual report may be as simple as adopting as is, unless there's any sort of comments on it. Um, and then we, we also have the work plan, which we can talk about in a moment, uh, unless you wanna focus on the annual report first. So Chair Fisher, if it's okay, I, the, the annual report, I think we, I thought we had drafted and finalized a couple of months ago, maybe a few months ago now. So um, I didn't have anything further unless it's changed. No, it's, oh. it's the same. Yeah, I, I just don't think we actually took the formal action oh, okay. of adopting it. Okay, so it's, it's, it was fine with me then. And if it's the same, then it's fine with me now. Those are my thoughts. Commissioner Hughes, do you have any comments on the? No, I thought it was good. I, my only question is to make sure that um, my fellow commissioner Gableson was good with the description for the measure in progress. I know he has tweaked and worked on those. And... Yeah, because I think I was part of. Yeah, so I think it. Mm -hmm. I think it reflects it all. It looks like what we submitted. Uh, yeah, we certainly didn't change these, and I, you know, the even though there were some tweaks to the measure and projects, they largely um, stayed the same. I don't think any projects were removed, so they're they're probably okay. pretty close to yeah. So thank you, Commissioner Hughes. I I think I'm good with it. So Ted, when when would this be uh, submitted to the uh, council? Um, I'm not sure. There was a little confusion. We thought that these would be. We weren't sure if these are going to be adopted tomorrow night at the Congress. Uh, it sounds like that's not going to be the plan. I think the plan is to feature the um, chair's uh, statement, which uh, Commissioner Abelson is your statement from last year. That's at the, the head of the report. So I think that will be featured. And then let me take um, another look then. Sure, of course, that's Fine. a good warning. <laughs> and then there's the presentation. But I, I so I'm not sure, but I'm assuming that perhaps the next council meeting, these get, the annual reports get adopted. With the change of um, annual reports and work plans from a calendar year schedule to a fiscal year schedule, there's a little bit of confusion about how it's going to be done. Because they used to make, would schedule that you had a, a presentation to the council, the commission's representatives, and oftentimes they'd have them be three commissions on a given council meeting, do a five minute presentation of their annual report. So now that's been changed to what's happening tomorrow, but I don't know if in your previous one time commissioner of Congress, February, 2020, did you adopt the annual reports that evening? I don't remember that. Yeah. So I, no. I, I think because no, we, 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 we didn't have annual reports. I, I think uh, the chair of the commission made a presentation to the council and their at their February or March meeting. Right. And I remember doing that via zoom. So that, Post pandemic. So that presentation is what's happening tomorrow. Um, so then the, I think the adoption happens at another time without the presentation, if that makes sense. So I just had, now that I'm looking at it and it was high, you highlighted it, the, the message. I, so I don't know when and if, if and then exactly this gets to, I, I, we worked on this. So it'd be great if the city council could see it at some point, what we're talking about. Yes. If it's, if it's not tomorrow night. Um, there were just two things in that a message from the commission chair. Um, there's a, just a typo in the third line towards the end. So uh, commission's activities from January through December, 2021 comma, it's first full year singular since first meeting, you know, it says years. That's just a typo. I thought our first meeting was in May, 2020. Was it April? I think it was April. Any, anyone know? We can go check. And I think we checked when we did this. Um, okay. Um, and then instead of previous chair, I think I think it's probably better to say immediate past chair instead of previous chair. Immediate past chair is the anyway, just a couple typos. But if 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 there's a way to make those couple corrections and whatever submit it to council, even if it's just a receive and file, I don't. Oh. Uh, under my name, instead of previous, immediate past chair. Yeah, it's small, but because this is not something they're going to get tomorrow night. That we know, right? 
the the statement they would get tomorrow night and i think it may be just this this not the airport no no okay so yeah forgetting the statement of sure yeah. uh, we might have caught that first thing it's first full years when we when we did it the other is crazy small so but we can yeah. um we can double check on both yeah okay so i i know that uh it's uh signed by uh our immediate past chairman um what's the protocol at the meeting tomorrow uh these uh the year 21 accomplishments were occurred under um, when Commissioner Abelson was the chair. Is it possible that he could present the year 21 accomplishments and then I talk about the work plan for 22 23? I think it's possible. Um, we haven't really gone over it just yet, um, but I, I did point out that. Um, that issue because we basically for this commission and for our environmental commission, we use the 2021 period for accomplishments and then um, the 22 23 for the work plans. We kind of didn't address those six months in this presentation, even though this coming year in the annual report, we would address 18 months, if that makes sense. But for the Public Works Commission, we did it a little bit differently because we went up to this June for our annual report, um, which hasn't been adopted yet, and then moved into the fiscal year. So I don't know how we're adjusting, but we could- if I'm, I appreciate the, the suggestion, yeah. but I'm happy for you to do it. I think it's probably, I mean, I think it's probably more efficient to have one person from each commission, and I can't think of a better representative than, than you. So I'm, I'm happy for you to, to do it. But and, you know, it. forgive me, I, I have no idea what the other commissions are doing. So they could be doing all sorts of different things that we're not doing. So <laughs> it might I be, just remember yeah. a couple of years ago when we last had it, that it was quite lengthy because we happen to have a lot of commissions. So to have a couple of people from each one doing it could make it even. I, that lengthy. was the goal they passed down was that only a couple of slides and only a few yeah. minutes. So, OK, we're good. I think it was public work. Yeah, and you you did it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, so the work plan, right? That's the other piece. Uh, yes. Yeah, if that's all the changes on the annual report, uh, just the message from the chair, and I think that's it. Um, we can move on to the work plan. So um, the work plan uh, template that many of the commissions are using this year is a little bit different than in past uh, years. Um, and uh, this might help be helpful with some input from the commission. Um, but our thought on the work plan was that uh, there's certainly many things that we can, um, we know that we're going to have to, that we know we want to accomplish and that we have a general understanding of what that timeline will be. Um, and then there's another layer of things that will just come along as we experienced last year that will, the commission will need to work on in the immediacy or we'll need to visit again. So we didn't represent that layer of things in this plan. This is our, this we looked at as our base plan of the things that we think will happen at these times during this year based on our, on our um, operating plan and our, our capital improvement program. Um, so we wanted to allow some flexibility in, in moving things if we needed to, and then also um, bringing new items onto the agenda as needed, but it wouldn't be without discussion of the commission first. Um, our thought was that as we move through the meetings um, each month, we could, you know, we do this with the chair and the vice chair anyway, because we have a, a pre-meeting where we talk about what's coming up in the month or next month or two. Um, but uh, we could certainly plan ahead with the commission, uh, both to keep items meeting streamlined and, you know, and not too lengthy. Um, but also to prepare you so that you know what's coming up to discuss it. So this was our basically our, our first pass at a baseline plan that we know these things are going to come up about these times, but it certainly doesn't cover things like, um, you know, uh, um, electing new commissioners, which could happen, or, or appointing new commissioners, which could happen any time based on people's availability and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, or addressing operational issues that come up in the city or as the council directs this commission to take on during any given council meeting. 
so it's it's not as um it's not as detailed as the plan in the past but then when i compared the 2021 plan to what actually was discussed it, it didn't align and i think that was probably um because there's demands that change over the year and and things um things get modified so just looking for some feedback on that this is using the template that um other commissioners or other commissions are using this year any uh comments on the work plan for next year commissioner hughes um thank you mr chair just should we somewhere in here then include um maybe it, it's a sub of the street improvement projects so that we can figure out where we are with with what what's actually being done, where the designs are, where the construction is, and then start looking again and, and somewhere in here also where you want to do and, and plan your um, street analysis for the CPI. And and then as a touch point somewhere a couple of times to figure out where we are with those projects and the SB1 money and that will impact a lot of that. Yeah, we could do that. In fact, I I thought we had on the side, we must have missed it, that we would be doing a a, um, a new SB1 uh, resolution approval during the year. We usually do that around April or May, and that should have been on here. So that might have been our mistake in missing it. Um, so we can add that for certain. With regard to updates, um, we could do that uh, one of a couple of different ways. We could use, use our current uh, sort of like uh, update summary staff report to talk about street improvement projects. If we wanted to do something more comprehensive and 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 talking about what our research has yielded and all these things we talked about tonight, we could schedule that out um, for some months from now. If we want to do that. It's the one thing we have not had, and I think we haven't experienced it that much because of the pandemic and COVID, is historically often we would have residents come and advocate for their street. And come and say, you know, here's pictures, here's, here's condition. They would dump actual street on a table. It actually happened. And I think because of COVID, we haven't seen a lot of that, but that doesn't mean it's not going to come back again. So I think being able to figure out too that people can, you know, give us information. I mean, we need to kind of, you know, because they're the they're the people on the ground. They live with it. Um, sure. Get an analysis of that and, and where we can get good information about really what are the priorities. That's a good point. Um, so at a general level, one of the comments we've heard from you over the months is that we uh, you want to make sure that you're taking out items that need, you know, review or action by the commission, not necessarily just something that we're um, talking about. So we want to make sure that we uh, provide a differentiation on things that we want to um, present, things we want to discuss, things we want you to recommend to us. So we could certainly add that. I, I guess the question would be, um, is it is it us like presenting our status or is it um, is it looking for uh, that public input level that when you know someone brings a piece of their street over? Um, it, it, we can add it certainly. It's just a matter of what what would it be that you're looking to. Um, I just don't know whether it makes sense to like okay, we're going to have one one meeting and it's geared to local streets, and that's where we would. Again, maybe that's where we get the C, the new CPI. Mm -hmm. We look at the criteria for the CPI, and then the public knows that this is a day we're really going to delve into looking at the local streets. Here's our list of what is under construction, under design, under review. If we do a, a slurry program, how's that going to, you know, how does that, and then kind of have it so that it's almost like we know we've kind of not fulfilled the last few years and we're going to do catch up. But again, to bring it together and say, we're really going to concentrate on the next X amount of years. And here's the strategic plan to do it. Well, wouldn't that be when we discuss the 23, 24 program? Um, it might be partially that, but we also need to do everything we got to, we're going to try to catch up on. Um, we could do them together. I mean, we would have typically in, in typical years, it looks as if you, you do the, um, annual SP1 selection towards the end of the year, because that's when we do it with council is like May or June. So you would do it around April or May. Um, but we do plan on having this long range discussion with council early 2023. So if you feel it's appropriate, um, we could do 
that discussion with you first, because we'll certainly be looking for your recommendation if we're going to recommend a plan of action for council. Um, and then we could move up uh, the SB1 selection to that point also, because it doesn't, it's not like you can't do that too early. We don't have to wait to the end of the fiscal year to do that. We could do it any time. Um, because if we take all of your projects, if we take everything back to the 2018, every, everything forward, everything you've listed, it's like, what's, what is that number? How does that pencil out? How many millions is that? Because we said, okay, we've got three to five-ish. And then depending on what we get for the SB1 funds. And then, but then if we add all that up, what is that cost? What does that really cost mm -hmm. to the totality of you adding in what you need for utility or curb and all that other stuff? And then we say, okay, it's, it's I'm making a number up. It's $12 million. $12 million if two is going to take us six years, potentially five years, whatever, to get through all of that while we know we have to add, continue to add on to catch up and just so that we can kind of get a handle on where we are, what we need to bring back and, and solve that, was, that should have been done, mm -hmm. and what needs to go forward in a way that can really be planned. Does, does that make sense? Ted, when do we have to... Or when do you take this to city council? Um, we are hoping to do this in early 2023 with city council. I have a proposal. Yes. Um, December 2022 is reserved. How about if we use that for street improvement program review, something like that? Um, and then, and that maybe can help be the precursor to. What you present to council when we can discuss whatever we need to discuss and then it's also maybe helpful in terms of what you plan to do in the next month or two with council just think i think reserved kind of meant that we were dark that month right was that what it meant? i think the thought was that we you might not want to have a meeting on december 22nd or whatever it is <laughs> i can't imagine do we ever do we usually skip december we haven't. I think we've I don't recall it. We, we did last December. Um, we didn't hold the meeting on oh. the 13th. Is that, is that what you're saying? <laughs> okay. We, we're I'm here. So, I whatever apologize. you want to do. But um, it, it's good. So, it's either that or it's whatever um, you know gets pushed because we had something more, a higher priority in the next six months. So, we could, we can do this however you'd like to I do mean, it. It's a work plan. Yeah. Right. So, at least it's just a suggestion it's there right and um i can't imagine you're not seeing us one month but um and then as we move forward through the year if things need to be changed or adjusted but at least it's there and i think it's an important topic that isn't elsewhere so and i know, you know that, anyway just a thought we we yeah we certainly should add it um a matter of where is by preference or you know it can be flexible or we can have two meetings one month if you want yeah, the, the third Tuesday is December the 20th. And I oh. think what we're trying to avoid last year is getting it too close to the well, we can move holiday on. season when some people might wish to travel. Ah. So we could call a special meeting, uh, you know, the, the week before or something. We did, That's what we did last year, if you remember. Yeah. We did a special meeting on like 13th right. or something like that. Um, but it, again, up to you. Uh, I think it's a good idea to do it. Um, before you have to present it to council um, and to do it early in December rather than on the third Tuesday. Uh, would that be okay with you, Commissioner Hughes? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And you didn't officially call on me, but th the only other notes I was going to say is review of sounds very passive to me. And a lot of this is optics. So I was just going to suggest, and I like, generally what you've done here. I was just to suggest for the first three items, um, specifically that, that, and maybe even this fifth one, that you take out the words review of, which is Meridian Traffic Data Analysis, Slow Streets Program. Um, I don't know, it just sounds a little more. Sure. It, that was intentional because um, our thought was that we wouldn't necessarily ask for, um, you know, we would receive input on those all of those but we might not uh necessarily take um like a recommendation to oh, do I anything see. 
because there's no recommendation to take to council on those just yet. Okay. Um, like for example, the slow streets program, if we do that in August, that's really just us implementing the, um, you know, any sort of feedback be, as we get started, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose we could recommend the residential program to council because council would adopt us putting it in. So that, that might be an appropriate thing to do, but- okay. I mean, um, you had a strategic reason for including- Yeah, I mean, for like data. Meridian traffic data, we will, we are planning to review, but we don't know if we're gonna be able to do anything about it after that review. Cause we're, we didn't plan on coming with a recommendation like you should do this next Got month it. on okay. Meridian. Okay. That's fine. But, uh, but your comment uh, is well received cause there are a couple of things that might be closer to a recommendation than a review. Thanks. Okay, any other comments regarding the 22-23 work plans? Okay. Um, do we need to vote on that? Um, I think what we'll do is we'll take your, you'll take your option, your, your comments, and we'll give you, a, um, I mean, if, you, if you'd like to adopt it given the com, if you'd like to adopt it given the comments, we could just actually have a work plan in place. And if we change it, we change it instead of us waiting until July um, to adopt it. I think it would be helpful if we all agreed as to what subject we we're going to discuss for each of our upcoming meetings. So do we have a motion to approve this work plan as amended for December? Awesome. Was was that the only was that the only change we were going to do? If it is, it's fine. I just want to confirm. That's the only change I heard. Of. I mean, but we discussed some other things. I didn't know where sure, the other things we talked about was um, making sure that the SB one um, recommendation would be in there, whether we do that in December or we do it later in 2023. Uh, and then um, if there's anywhere appropriate to change review to recommendation, because we'll be asking action of you, we can make that change too. So adoption of this work plan does not necessarily preclude other items from being added on for that month. Not at all. In fact, that, okay. that's the whole point is just having that flexibility, but at least showing um, this is what we're committed to doing. It also reflects to the city council that all of their strategic plan items, which are represented in this plan, will be considered. So where do we leave off procedurally? Uh, I'm I sorry. would recommend that the <laughs> adjustments that we have here have mentioned to the work plan, knowing that again it, it, it's a living document and that it could be changed over the course and new things added. I interpret that as a motion, correct? Do I have a second? I will second that. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right. We've accomplished our action items. And we'll move now to um, agenda item number seven, city council liaison communications. We'll note that uh, Councilman um, Primuth is not here today. So we'll go directly to commissioner communications. Um, start with commissioner Hughes, anything you wanted to mention? Just that, are they still gonna be working head on the city, the stone sign? Um, we don't really have any further plans right now because, uh, um, we, by state mandate, we can't water that sign. Um, if you have any recommendations about other cleanup efforts we could do, uh, it's kind of in a holding pattern unless we were to change the ground cover. I was wondering about mulch. Um, because we've got, ooh. we've got a good amount. We tend to have, we know we do the mulch giveaways and all that, but maybe that would also, um, that's a good idea. It would help with, with two things. One, it would help with what, what, any retention of moisture that we get. Um, and then the other is would also, I think, create more of a, give us a little bit more contrast between the stone and the mulch. So that with, even without the lighting that we have, would help maybe make the, the actual stone work and the spelling of the city be, come out a little uh, stronger with more, um, having it more visible. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. Um, let me, I'll get with our team to see if uh, that's feasible. It sounds like it is. Because I think right now, West Coast Arbor is part of what they do with all the chipping is they then give us it. Then we 
intended to put it down there off Monterey Road on the side there. We just, you know, dumped it. We had it and we had people and we'd give it away and make it open. But it might be good to take some of it or West Coast to give us more to be able to cover that. And again, it'll help with the moisture retention and give us more of that contrast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a possibility. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Abelson. In light of the late hour and that fantastic idea, I will uh, I will yield my time. No, no additional comments. Um, other than sorry. Um, Ted, I appreciate all that you're doing. And I know I've for the 25th time I've said it, whatever it is we can do to implement even small things short term. Um, and to work with whoever we need to work with to make that happen would be fantastic. And I think would make us, I think would, we're here for the public and we're very good at taking in information and producing recommendations and documents. Um, it would be great if we could actually produce something tangible for the public to enjoy and appreciate as well. However small, at least initially, it would be fantastic. Thank you for everything. Now I'm done. Um, I didn't have a, uh... A comment other than the stone sign, City of South Pasadena. I thought the grass framed it very well. Uh, but yeah, if we can only water two days a week during the summer months, we're not going to see grass. So. We actually can't water that at all um, because it's it's technically non-functional turf that has no recreational purpose. So we actually can't water it. Um, it, it's a different, you know, this is, this is actually a lot of the work we've been doing this last month with council in terms of clarifying all the water conservation program for the city. Um, but it falls into, it's basically in the median category where we've had to stop watering medians um, with the exception of the trees on the medians um, as a preservation measure. So yeah, unlike your residential, uh, your residence, so where you're, you're allowed to water twice a week or restricted to water twice a week, this falls into yeah. a different category for us. State Water Resources Board uh, put out a, a directive that all commercial, um, institutional, and uh, industrial is not allowed to be watered at all if it's non-functional. Well, what's an interesting takeaway is is that we should keep be mindful of that in terms of our projects moving forward, and projects that contemplate landscaping, um, medians, planters, whatever. We should be thinking about. Or should it be rethought and or should we be thinking about other types of products, species, plants, um, drought tolerant or otherwise? Because I know we, you know, years ago with the Rogan projects on Fair Oaks and Orange Grove and stuff, there's a lot of planting in there that requires a lot of maintenance and water and you shut it off and it's going to work. Well, actually going back to the putting in the medians along um, Orange Grove, doing that, Columbia going down when that was added. The original landscaping plant was going to be roses, if I remember correctly. Wow. And already roses? said, absolutely not. They have to be more California friendly. Same thing when they redid the middle school. They did their middle school, NREP stepped in and we said, no, you've got, you're, you're putting things in their water that take a lot of water. Well, that's so great. We actually made recommendations on them and they changed their landscaping plan to be more California friendly. Very forward thinking. That's great. Just saying. I had no other comments. We'll go to uh, item number nine, staff liaison. Um, I, I don't have any uh, further comments. Um, I, I was going to share our, our update on our staff, our staffing, but we did discuss that already. So I'll, I'll pass on that. I'll, I'll just um, follow up on the conversation about planning for uh, drought tolerant improvements. So we have a multi pronged approach to that. We were um, working on these, uh, a, a, like a local stormwater pilot project where we can actually design an area to receive um, like uh, dry weather, urban runoff and also wet weather and store it in a cistern underground locally in that area and then use that to water um, the surrounding median. We're gonna try to pilot that over here at uh, City Hall at, at, at Hope and Mound, hopefully. Um, and then um, uh, where our recreation centers are trying to uh, utilize reclaim water there. So we're already utilizing water from the Arroyo Seco to water the golf course. Our plan is to actually uh, expand that to the, um, the, uh, 
the uh, um, baseball and soccer fields uh, in the future with a stormwater project that we're working on over there. So yeah, we, that's something we're really aware of. And just like everything else, we're sort of tying in all those future planning requirements into those projects. Thank you. Sorry. Does what we just discussed have any impact on the pocket parks, which I think if I saw an agenda correctly in the not too distant past are moving forward? They do, yes. Our, our team is working on a stormwater um, mitigation and capture for the pocket parks also because they're actually on a, the one up Berkshire is on a slope and actually water would run off into neighbors, which we can't do. Uh, so we're working on that design. Uh, we're supposed to review that design this week. Uh, I don't remember how far along it is, but it's pretty far along. Okay, thanks. Thank you. And with that, we've concluded our meeting for today. It's 918. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow night and in July. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks, everyone.